all over the back of Prudhoe now in the 8-4 media entry. We're going to see Shane Tate's made his way up to 10th. He's on, he's on his way back. And Scotty Melville with the fastest lap time by the looks of it so far, 148.8. Oh, I might have thought he was dropping back, but maybe he was actually coming forward, trying to make a move there. Pring now trying to break this once draft down the working with straight. The toe. Yeah. Look at that. That toe, that's just made 20 metres. It's incredible the difference in speed, though, as they go down. Pring gets a slingshot. That's going to sit Lockie back in third. Definitely a bit of shake and bake going on in this race. Oh, yeah. I think it's the only way they can beat Lockie at some times, the way he's going out there. Is, oh, look, he's, he's is a small mistake. He's doing or... it easy out there. Let me tell you, no. the competitive field, he even said last night, this is fantastic, because, you know, he has a lot of fun when he's racing like this. I think they all do. The guys that are, that are you know, been around for a while, they want this, so they want a challenge, and, and that's what makes it fun. If you've got respectful drivers and you can play, play like this, that's fun racing. Like last night, I... I reckon I saw 10 different groups you know, cuddling each other going, how good was that? And you know, as a category manager, that's what I want to see. I want to see the drivers have fun. Well, what can Lockie Ward do as they head up to turn number six? You can throw a, you can throw a napkin over them, I think, at this point, in the top three. A towel, you'd get four and five too. As <laughs> we see him go around turn number seven there. Billy's right on the back of Pring. Now, he's been waiting for his opportunity. They've, they've worked together to get past Lockie. And now it's time for the two front runners to see if they can try and work their work together again to, to open that gap up and then just leave the last couple of laps for them to fight it out. And, and Lockie might be sitting back at this point. I mean, I know it's still a lot of hard work behind the wheel, but he'll know that he'll get his moment. Yeah, look, moment if, he, coming. if you line it up on the straight, as we've seen, you can, uh, you can definitely take advantage of that slipstream. Let's see how this changes. Oh, have a look down at the pits there. Oh, Matty, Matty Bond. Matty Bond, he's had something go wrong there in the... Uh, the Dick Johnson. He uh, he's looking for the guy in the parts van. Right. I'm up here, mate. <laughs> so go, there you go. go and grab what you need. Leave me Billy in IOU. Billy and Ryan, once again, working together, and look at the gap they've created. This gives them a little bit of a buffer now so they can really stash it out in the last couple of laps. Yeah, once again, smart driving from Billy. Instead of trying to make that move, you know, like we all do when we're, we're young, we think we've got to go around. But he's, he thinks ahead. He thinks, hang on, let's get a gap so we can uh, actually have some breathing space here. So Matty Bond down in the pits there, hearing he might have uh, dropped a cylinder in that car as oh, well. So that's no. um, it's going to be an interesting one. They'll go down and see if they can, if there's something they can do about that between races. Because you've still got two more races coming your way today as well. So it's a busy afternoon for you. Hey, look, everyone will get in there. We've got a great group where if someone's out like that, um, you'll find everyone will jump in and, uh, and give him a hand. So hopefully it's something simple that we can fix up. And a light engine. Yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> you can lift them out by yourself, I think. Exactly. Well, uh, Scotty Morgan had to go home yesterday and get a spare engine. I think he came back and had it changed in 40 minutes. So yeah, you know. Incredible how you work on these cars. I mean, they are a very modular car. Easy to, to work on, I suppose, in the sense, and uh, plenty of spare parts around having the parts van here on the weekend as well. And here we go. We, the bat battle's starting to spread out. Nathan Preto's just gone back a few positions back into sixth. It looks like... Uh, Hurrigan and Hogan have managed to get back past him and they'll have their own little battle now for fourth position there. Ward now stuck in that third position. He's he's looking like maybe he, he's not going to have enough to challenge him if Pring and Finnegan keep working together. I'm just having a look at Shane Tate in the background. Moved his way back up into ninth position, which is a great uh, fight back after being in 20th position after having mechanical issues yesterday. Yeah, look, he'll be working his way back and hopefully he'll do that in the next race as well and be back up the front by the third race. Once again, working together, smart driving, Billy. Well, he, had, he had a look, though. He had a little bit of a look. Here we go. As they this head is the to final the... lap, so yeah. if he's going to have a look, it's now. Yeah, they'll be saying not too many corners left. Make them count. Let's look at that last uh, straight line speed. 196 for Billy down the straight and 187 for Lachlan. So that slips dreams. Well, here we go. Three wide, two. Williams. Come out the benefactor of this one. No, maybe down the inside. It'll be oh. 39 of Bonds. Aiden Williams, one of the new guys in the, uh, in the series. Fantastic move. Well done, Aiden. Oh, it's, not, it's not over yet. Spicer says, hey. Oh, I, uh, turn number two is mine. Oh, is he going to overcook it? No, he's pulled it up. He did a really nice job there. For Aiden to be up there, you know, with those, uh, those guys are seasoned drivers. That's fantastic for the young bloke. Martin in that mix as well racing for a couple of years as well out there in the field so really in terms of uh, getting behind the wheel of these cars it's not a whole lot of experience 
No, look, he hasn't had a lot of experience, but uh, Hardy's still running the 12.50 there too, so uh, he's doing a great job. Lockie Ward, now he's come sniffing. He said, hey, boys, enough's enough. It's final lap. Let's try and make this uh, exciting. I, I saw what happened to me uh, last night <laughs> with Hogan. If I can just get close enough, maybe I can do a Hogan over the finish line. Oh, oh he's, he's muffed that up. Oh, he's, he's trying to cut a few corners Ooh. here. Don't track that's track was definitely a little bit shorter, I think, than the other boys. But oh, Spring slides a car out. He won't get a good run out of that. That might take a couple of kilometres an hour off him. Here we go down to the finish Billy's line. The checkered the flag's down. out. Finnegan, can he do it? Come on, Billy. Can he make it home by just an inch? I think he and might. he's done it. Oh, Spring. Oh, it's just the second time. This weekend, he's just been pipped at the post, and uh, Lockie Ward will be behind that thing. This was a fantastic race. Ends up in third position. Rob Hogan in fourth. Nathan Credo's going to come around in fifth position. They start to get over the line, but what a finish there. 53 one-thousandths of a second. A ten-thousandths of a second, it is. That's fantastic. Yeah, look, uh, the, the, um, the front runner did a great job. I've got to uh, commend Billy. That was a smart drive. The whole way through, he... he he thought about that and uh, didn't make any silly moves and waited his time and, and got rewarded for it. Now look, they're loving it too. The thumbs are up. They'll go back and I'm sure there'll be some cheering on back down in the pits. Um, it's got to give you a lot of motivation for the final couple of races. You get back at the car prepared and know that this is the level of racing between all these drives. It's so close, so competitive, but there's also that sportsmanship in it. Here we go, Billy Finnegan, the official results for Legend Cars Australia. will take the win by a very, very small margin over Ryan Pringham. It's Lockie Ward, Rob Hogan, Nathan Prido, Brendan Hurrigan, Ben Goodridge, Scott Melville, Shane Tate, and Lincoln Pope. I really like Shane Tate in that ninth position. And Lincoln Pope. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Lincoln Shane Pope. Pope, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, Lincoln Pope, young guy, new guy, and to get up in 10th, well done, Lincoln. Scotty Morgan in 11th, and he goes back to Bruce Duckworth, Mark. Duckworth, Aidan Williams, Chris Spicer, Hardy Martin, Stuart Bond, Darren Bradley, Josh Hurrigan, and unfortunately Matthew Bond in the 17 looks like he may be a mechanical issue down there in the pits with a cylinder. So I'm sure you'll be back down there in just a second to try and sort that out. Here comes the high tech oils highlights in with Billy Finnegan and Ryan Pring working together after a dominant Lachlan Ward. How fast he's been as a singular lap car to car, he's probably been the quickest out there. But if you work together, you can uh, just go a little bit faster in that main straight and try and take him out of the equation, which is what they did throughout the race in the final five laps. Yeah, 100%. You can see uh, Nathan Proto had a great race there too. You know, he's, um, he's really, uh, really come there fifth. He really drove well. Yeah, he had a moment there where he was in third position. But, I mean, when you've got people like Hogan and... Uh, and that behind you, Hurrigan, you know, he's the national champion from last year. It's, it's very hard, I suppose, to <laughs> apply the pressure there. So to be in this position, the fantastic result there. This is pretty interesting. The last couple of laps of the race, too, when we saw them um, really go across the line there. And it was great to see that Aidan Williams, who's a newcomer to this category as well, uh, take a few risks showing that uh, willing to... Uh, really pushed the car on the outside there, although he'd come a little bit unstuck here, the 33 managed to have Chris Spicer managed to get back up on the inside, Lucky Ward in the final couple of corners, thought, mate, if I can take a few metres off these corners, I might just be able to get that in that slipstream we saw last night that Hogan did, but wasn't able to get close enough, Billy really Finnegan, they took full advantage of it, got under there, got the draft, and there wasn't even a car length in it, it was less than a car length over the finish line at 190 kilometres an hour. Fantastic race, yeah, so very smart by Billy. Ryan, uh, he, he's had that happen to him twice this weekend, but I'm sure before the weekend's over, he'll get one in the bag. Oh, look, he's still having a fantastic meet. He, he's banking the points up, though. He's super consistent, so it's great to see the uh, Legend Cars Australia, and that was race number three. Race number four for them will be up just a little bit later, too. we still got two races to come from the Legend Cars Australia. Next, we'll see them just after 5 p.m. this afternoon as we move on now to the Australian XL Series. Supported by Nankang, we thank Tony Ward for joining us up here in the commentary box. And it's time to get these uh, little pocket rockets back out onto the uh, track. We saw them last night. We had a little bit of um, placard bingo going on as they were making a few excursions off. A bit of rally driving there. Go see uh, Blake Tracy will take us off the front row of the grid for this one with Tyler Collins alongside, who was the, uh, the culprit for taking out the high-tech oils. Brett Peters joins me again here in the commentary booth. Toby Waghorn was super impressive last night. Caleb Patterson, I mean, was there one in the top four that didn't impress us at all? Josh Richards, I could put him in there. Verica as well in sixth. James Simpson, Cody Tucker, Jaden Santon, Josh Trapp in the top 10. It could really go to any single one of those. Absolutely, Matt. Look, the vibe in the, in the paddock's fabulous this morning. All these young drivers did such a great job yesterday. So, um, 
really, really good. Yeah, we'll, we'll get him back on board with uh, Trace, uh, with um, Tyler Collins this weekend, of course, in the, well, it's the, the number one, really, but it's the 77 on the inside, which is his race number, but uh, carrying the number one from last season. And, well, uh, he, he did a shock, didn't he, in, in race number one. We saw him go off. Um, I noticed last night, uh, watching a lot of the socials out there, we've we got to get a shout-out for the bingo. So I think we'll, oh. we'll have to get that going there for the boys. <laughs> that might be a bit of banter down in the pits with them. Waghorn there, uh, watch out for him as well. But we've, um, we've got some interesting racing coming up from the XLs because, well, it's always exciting is what it is. It's, it's never, uh, never boring here. Tyler Collins was runner-up in race in our race last night in the end, in race number two. Yeah, he had and a great drive, really. Yeah, I mean, from, his way uh, back. from his race one um, result, he really did put in a great performance to get back up to the front. So, uh, And then the, the in-car of Caleb Patterson, um, that nearly went over. Um, he was a very, very lucky boy. So um, no, they've, they've tuned them all up, and I think we're going to see some more great racing. A little bit more sunlight on the track from last night, so the conditions might be just a, a fraction different there, and um, look, Patterson, I'm sure, is keen to get around the outside there, coming out of position number four for this one in a row two. So we'll wait and see what he can do. Nana Pop on board, of course. Oh, nice end the start. Looks like Collins has got a slight jump. Does. Maybe. Oh, so even no, match no, no. performance, but down the inside. It's going to be Collins. Collins is going to be on the outside. Well, he's going to duck down the inside. He was on the outside, though. It looks like like Tracy in the 195 car. Patterson goes, no, I'm going to put my nose into this fight, too. Don't go too wide. Verica on the outside as well in that green and white car. Richards on the inside in the 557. Wow, this is a great start. Simpson 2 in the 76 car, just in the back. Boys are all talking. They think that Blake's got a little bit of speed advantage over them, so they're actually talking about trying to hang on to him and not fight in his early laps. So we'll see how we go. Yeah, well, we look at Tyler Collins there. He's just going to settle in. He's got to watch out for Patterson, though. And it's, we just saw that in the Legend Cast Australia. There's a couple of drivers working together to really... You know, they know someone out in front just a slight bit faster just for some reason with the car. So they, they work together, they get past him and then get a couple of laps on him, like just, just to open up a couple of second gap or just a one second gap before they got back underway with their battle. So it might be something that these guys need to start thinking about. Oh, 100%. And they can see it on the, on the Nats off with the top speed. They get great little toe down the front straight and that's the only time they get a speed advantage. So if they can hang on to the bumper and get that toe, they can stay together. But the front three have already dashed away a bit there. Yeah, they've. Um, it's the, the top three at the moment. Waghorn is um, just backed off a little bit, from, which is a bit of a surprise after what we saw last night. I thought he might have stayed, but mind you, Berica has kept a lot of pressure on him though in the background. That might be slowing him down a little bit because he might be covering that off. And Tyler Collins there goes, mate, I will use every bit of the ripple strip if it means staying with you, Tracy. Here we go. Time to get a bit of bump draft down the main straight. Wherever Tracy goes, I'm sure Collins will follow at this point. There's no need to take an overtake manoeuvre. We've got 12 laps in this race. Watch as he goes from one. It's much more stable since he put a shock absorber in it. That makes a amazing difference, doesn't it? <laughs> it's a huge difference. Under brakes here, he will go a little bit wider. Might take a little line here to Tracy. Collins will. He'll, he'll try to use like a double apex. Getting in there, all oh, the ripple strip as well. They're all absolutely thoroughly enjoying uh, look, SLP. Look at oh, yeah. the back. Dave, he's now joined. It's an awesome force at the front. Yep, there you go. Good. He must have had a really good toe down the straight, and he's back on them. It, it can make a big difference, can't it? It's that slight little difference. Verica now needs to watch out because he's under attack from Richards as well. Yeah, Waghorn certainly found his pace like he just did the, the best first sector. Well, he might have started with those tyre pressures down, you know, a smidgen, you know, even and, half and that's a pound. the things, isn't it, when it comes to these cars? Like, we're only talking, like, three or four horsepower between a, a good engine and a not-so-good engine, really. Um, it, there's not too much. I mean, there is adjustments in the car, but everyone's got the opportunity for those adjustments. It's not like um, you can go out and buy the best of the best. It's, it's very controlled in this category. So it is going to be little things like how you adjust out, your toe in, your toe out. 
um, your shocks, things like that, and your tyre pressures. Like, do you want to be fast at the start of the race, or do you want to be fast yeah. once you get temperature of the tyres a few laps in? Yeah. Oh, look, they've all been tuning in uh, this morning. I've said all the towing bars have been out, and the wheels have been off, and yeah, they've certainly, uh, they were here early after a late night, uh, and they're just trying to get those little hundredths of a second. Yeah, and, and that's what it's all about when it comes to XL Racing. Great to see so many of them joining here for the first round of the High Tech Oils Super Series. Of course, uh, our next round's going to be up at Morgan Park in Queensland uh, on the first weekend of June. So we actually go up on the 31st of May, but we're there first and second of June. Now, Queensland always brings, well, I'm going to say hundreds of these cars out. Yeah, we've ha always had really, really good numbers, and it's going to be uh, the, the Morgan Park round is actually one of our Queensland rounds. <laughs> Um, so we'll be back for our next round at Queensland Raceway. Okay. So yes, we'll be at, at Morgan Park, but the Australian series will be at Queensland Raceway, and the only round at Morgan Park uh, for my local series will be part of the Queensland series. Yeah, just well, to confuse everybody. Yeah, now. just to confuse them a bit. But Morgan Park, I mean, that is that is a small track where. It's going to be a lot different to City Mosman Park where we've got these straights and the bump draft. No, that's going to be breaking. Oh, and, <laughs> and it's, a, you know, it's bumpy, uh, it's technical, it's, it's a really, really good track for XL, so I uh, can't wait to see that on TV. Well, we've still got this race underway and the the uh, awesome force out the front at the moment. So Waghorn might have got past Peterson as well in those last couple of corners, so it now goes Tracy Collins. Waghorn now applying the pressure. He's right on the back of Collins. And uh, then just in the background now, we've got a fight going on for fifth position between Verica, Richard Simpsons and Sant. And, and on the back of that, you might just see Tucker joining into this one as well. The SB Tools entries uh, of um, Simpson and Tucker. They, they're they well and truly in the fight here. And, oh, you could almost debate that maybe these three are just out. No, there he is. It might just be Tucker falling off the back of this one. Just a fraction, but you never, never know. Uh, it just takes a run like this down the main straight. And here we go. Four of them working together. How fast can they go? Collins on Tracy. Now, are they going to try and hold off a hard-charging Waghorn? Is Waghorn going to be close enough to actually get some benefit from this toe as well? Which was going to make Peterson now seems to be just dropping off the back of this pack at the front. Yeah, maybe young uh, Caleb Patterson made a little error because he's certainly dropped off this uh, front three a little, hasn't he? Yeah, I think we might go. be right on the tyre pressures there for Waghorn though because now all of a sudden as we go a few laps in, he's back on the pace. Mm. Yep. Just, uh, we'll stay on board here for a second, have a listen to him as he goes through the gears. Yeah, look, Waghorn from his lap time, a record, uh, 54.5. He has got um, six, seven tenths over two cars in front of him. See him saying high up in the RPM for Tyler Collins. They go and negotiate turn number five now. There's a fair bit of runoff here if they need to use it. Blink on the brake lights. Just make sure he's got a little bit of brake pedal there before he tries to slow it down for turn number six. Wow, he's getting close. I can, I'd love to see what the rear vision mirror is seeing at the moment because yeah. there would just be a waghorn car there. Yeah. That's all it would be, full of it. And, and where does Waghorn get involved in this fight at the moment? It's something he's got to start thinking about because you're going to have to try and overtake two cars at the moment. Yeah, so look, absolutely. You wait for a mistake. You've still got six and a half minutes left in this race. Yep, and look, they've all got radios back to the pits, so they'll be getting um, news on how far to go, and he's just got to time it right. But he's certainly pushing hard. Wow. I don't... Can you even put a credit card between them, maybe? Yeah, you could there, yeah, just, just. But it's getting closer. Now we're going to see the toe down the main straight as they come around. We'll have a look at the speed difference too. These cars are probably going to be fairly evenly matched at this point. It must feel like you've just got a, a little bit of an extra horsepower when you're in the toe of these cars down the main straight. And I'm having a look at the times here as they come across. All really matched 173 to 174 kilometers an hour between the top three. And no one else is matching that in the field. Here we go, Here we three go. wide, three into turn number two, Waghorn's going to go two for one deal, hard under brakes, will go wide, the back wheel off into the air, and Collins goes, I'm just going to take this cool car and collect it, I'll have my position back, thank you, Tyler Collins really is the, um, is probably going to get the advantage, no, Waghorn's not giving up on this one, he's still in the fight, turn three is very, going to be very interesting here under brakes, because it's actually Tracy, uh, who's going to come around, sorry, in the 195, Collins is 
Going to get demoted to third position here. I don't think he's going to be able to make it back at this point. Well, clearly Wagner wasn't waiting until the last couple of laps. No. Absolutely went for it. Good on him. But waited for his moment, I thought. I thought that was the right moment for him to have a go. Whether he can pull away or whether it's going to be we go back down the straight and these guys then are going to have the advantage on Waghorn. You know, you've got to time that as well because it's going to be lap for lap almost. Well, he clearly had the car pace, didn't he? He obviously figured that he caught them. Uh, he watched them for, for a lap or a bit. Oh, look out. Oh. Kyler Collins has caught oh, Bush again. Not another shocky. <laughs> oh, you don't want to see that. Nana Pop already had a, had a moment yesterday watching yes, yes. the airport <laughs> cameras. And, uh, but it just shows how hard these boys are pushing. Really, really driving them to the limits. Patterson now left out in his own in fourth position. Then there's a bit of a battle going on for fifth between Verica, Richards and Tucker in the background in the SP Tools entry. Up on three wheels as they come around the final corner, turn number 11 onto the main straight here at City Motorsport Park. Have a look at the high-tech oils replay. And that was where we saw Trey, uh, Collins just go a little bit wide, just drops a wheel out and it drops right off the kerb too. Like, look at this from the on boards. Wow, that's, that's rough. That's bouncing around. Now, the shock wasn't hurt before. I'd be checking that after this race. Yeah, yeah, well, they've already replaced two, so hopefully uh, they've got some more spares. Oh. Here we go. We're on again. Well, it's going to be another familiar sight going into turn number two where they're all under brakes. We're only going too wide this time. Collins. He's in third position just looking at what's happening in front. Tracy. Still can't get that number one back off Waghorn. Waghorn's done a fantastic job to keep this one in the lead. And the times are dropping a little bit now that they've got this battle going on, aren't they? And we're only talking about maybe half a second a lap, but it's definitely just slowing them down a fraction. They're all having to watch each other in the mirrors, see exactly where they are on the track. Need a run up here as it goes up the hill. Turn number six. Three wheels giving you braking as you head into those corners. Very stiff once they put the cage in these little cars. Very rigid motor, little car to get around. And will he stay on the track this time for Collins? He won't want to be doing that one again. They're probably rating him going, don't. <laughs> we don't want you to hurt a shock. We've seen how hard the car is to drive when you do do that. Especially on a track like this, where you're pushing the outer limits of the track. You're going so fast through those turns, number one, and down into two. Anything you can do to settle the car down is going to give you an advantage. All right, who gets the run onto the main straight? Watch it go around this final corner. Two and a half minutes left. This Australian XL Series supported by Nankang. See Tyler Collins got a good run on there. I see uh, how his toe goes. Mind you, these two boys out front. Look at that, nice and close. Tracy's right on the back bumper, isn't he? 173 oh, kilometres an hour. Both sliding beautifully. Oh, Turn one on. No. no. Collins, oh, he's, got he's, he's got another sign. But not the batteries one. He hasn't got sign bingo yet. <laughs> You'll be getting a bill. <laughs> George was saying, uh, yeah, it's uh, unusual. I'm having to supply some more signs this morning. So on his birthday morning too, he won't want to be supplying any more. <laughs> Oh, we'll wait and see how this goes. That's probably going to drop Collins back a little bit. And he's going to have to watch out for Patterson too. Maybe he'll take a couple of corners just to see how the car feels again. Very familiar to what we saw yesterday. And we'll have a look at the replay here. Oh, maybe he just comes that corner with a bit more speed than he expected. The Super Series sign's gone. Uh, the braking marker's staying out there, though. We were talking to Dylan Thomas about that earlier. He said, yeah, we came around the corner and all of a sudden the marker's gone. And he goes... Took us a lap or two to figure out where we had to put the brakes on, you know. Just, <laughs> just you didn't expect it when you came out for the race. I said, "Yeah, well, you can thank the boys for that." Yeah, I think you know, really, Waghorn and Tracy have had the speed, and uh, everybody's, you know, Collins and Patterson have been doing a great job to try and hang on, but they're clearly having to just absolutely drive the wheels off them to hang in there. Well, let's see, Lo, um, if Collins can get back onto, because we should have another lap after this one. He may be able to claw his way up onto the back bumper. Well, it's this final corner, these final two corners here. I do believe we're going to have a checkered flag as they come by. But a few, um, a few clean-ups throughout some of the races here. So a couple of times certain races may come by and the checkered flag is out for this race. So Waghorn may get the win here. I don't think 
Tracy's going to be close enough to challenge as we head towards the start-finish line. Checkered flag is out, and Waghorn will confirm another victory there. And Collins, well, you've got to go back to the pits. One, you're checking shocks, and two, you're going, what have I got to do so I don't have to overdrive the car to keep trying to, to keep up with these guys? I mean, he's so close here. He's definitely got the pace. It's just um, you, the car can't be that unsettled, especially going to turn. Maybe it's just that turn one he doesn't like. Yeah, well, look, and the two cars in front, the TV captured perfectly. They both had nice slides through turn one. Maybe that just put him off a bit. You know, once again, he only had to move half a foot and he was off the road. So. Well, if you're using the car in front as a marker, if they're getting wider and wider, it only takes an inch or two and you've got half a wheel off in the dirt. Then you've got a whole car off in the dirt. Let's have a look at the uh, results here for the Australian XL Series, supported by Nankang, and, of course, it's going to be Toby Waglon. With the win in this race over Blake Tracy. Uh, our race two winner from yesterday. Then it's Tyler Collins, Caleb Patterson, Joshua Richards, Kobe Tucker, Brad Vereker, Jaden Santon, Josh Trappett, and Edward Mitchell in the 10th edition. Then James Sins, Lincoln Evans, William Wallace, and Joshua Shelley. They're in our 14 car field here for the Australian XL Series. Race number three. Uh, you're back out a little bit later on today here for for our racing uh, the, this afternoon here from uh, just after 5 p.m. 7pm, sorry. This is some highlights here, all thanks to High Tech Oils, of how the race started. And Collins managed to get it down into the first corner there, off the pole position. We thought that possibly that we were going to see... Um, sorry, Co Collins was in uh, second position, meant to slot in there and come across, because we did see Blake Tracy there take the lead very nice and early. And Waghorn just backed off for a section there, and I thought, oh, maybe he's... Um, Something wrong with the car, not quite on the pace, but a, a few laps later, once those tyres got temperature, we spoke, you were speaking about is maybe it's a different uh, temperature, uh, different pressure setting in the tyres. So as the heat comes in, the pressures will come up, and then all of a sudden, he was on race pace, and these three really had the stoush going on. Look at this side by side as they went through turn number one. That's full speed, 174 kilometres an hour. Great, isn't it? That's as fast as an XL goes. Yeah, <laughs> Where do you get the chance to make an XL do 174 kilometers an hour except on a racetrack here? Then they went three wide. This could have gone to anyone. Anything could have happened at this moment under brakes, a lock-up contact, but they managed to keep this nice and clean, which was great to see because Tracy managed to get back in front at this point. Waghorn holds on the inside, managed to get that position back. This is as they come across with the chequered flag. As they're going down the main straight, we've seen that big off just a little bit earlier there for Collins. So it came down to these two, fighting it out to take the chequered flag. Waghorn gets her in the end. Um, Tracy in second and Collins in third. Now, when you go for points for the start of the next race, I mean, that, that could change things up a little bit. Yeah, I can't wait. It's, it's always going to be, it's always highlights. It's exactly what, the, uh, what it says up there. It's always highlights when it comes to the Australian XL Series supported by Nankang here at Sydney Motorsport Park. Fantastic views. The clouds have hung around today, so it stayed reasonably cool out there. Track conditions are cool out there as well, and we're not too far away from getting underway with our TFH Hire TA2 Muscle Car Series framed by High Tech Steel Framing for their second race of the weekend. It's a massive weekend here for the High Tech Oils Super Series. We celebrate the opening round of the 2024 season here from Sydney Motorsport Park, of course. Round number two is going to be up at Morgan Park shortly. We are going to get a change in commentary here as our TOT Muscle Cars warm up out on track and they are going to get a rolling start not too far away. As uh, Wade Orange will start to make his way in here to the commentary box and the excitement will build as the, uh, the muscle will be unleashed here on the track. about turning in.
Boy, this is going to be a great race. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome to race two of round one. Here at the High Tech Oils Super Series, I'm sitting here with the birthday boy, George Gambino. I promised I was going to keep that a secret. <laughs> Oops. George, great to have your company on a cracking day here at Sydney Motorsport Park. Any day that race day is a cracking day. Yeah, it's a great day today because I came out of the city this morning about 5.30 and it was pouring rain. And I thought, it's going to be an interesting day. Never rains at a racetrack, mate. It's like a golf course, except this is exciting. Yeah, Hey, back of the field just here, we are going to see some big movers and shakers. We have guys starting down the back because of some issues yesterday, George. We're going to see, to start with, you got Brad Gartner is back there, Josh Thomas is back there, Connor Roberts is back there. So as much as the action will be on screen with those two right there, that's where we're going to see the action at the start. But at the back, you're going to have some big charges. This is... The TFH Hire TA2 Muscle Car Series, framed by High Tech Steel Framing. Cool shot up on the balcony as all the families start to get that little bit nervous. I love this place, George, and I know you love it because there's a lot of great drifting here as well. Yeah, it's great to place to, uh, so close to us, and it's our home track, really, for our, our drifting events and things, and we had our drift event this morning. Now, there's going to be a bit of drifting from your boy, Brad Gartner. I have a feeling that the quietly spoken farmer from Panola in South Australia is going to be quite the human highlight reel. Yeah, well, we put him in a car a couple of weeks ago at Winton and he, actually I think he learnt a lot out of my drift guys. <laughs> oh, wow. That scares me a little bit. What a great field. We're set for round one. It's a brand new season. Big ups to all the folks at the High Tech Oil Super Series and High Tech Batteries as well. I noticed a few of the guys yesterday, not our guys, traumatised some of your, your signage on the side of the track. Did you notice that? <laughs> yes, I know. Stephen gave me a call and said, I think you've got to replace a few signs, George. It was uh, hectic to say the very least. We're going to have some great onboard shots, that is for sure. Brad Gardner will be carrying some onboard footage as well for us. Boy, I can't wait for this. Josh Thomas as well. Josh in the A car for the TFH hire team. That's not Brad Thomas invested enormously, George, with TFH racing. They've got two cars in this class. They've got two cars in RX-8. They've got Hyundai Excels. They're in the uh, Gazoo Toyota Series as well. Uh, there, Todd Hazelwood here this weekend as well. Yeah, he must be busy because all my fuel guys keep saying, I don't know about this TF guys. They're buying so much fuel. Every second car has got TFH. Josh Haynes, the 20-year-old out of Canberra, lines up on your pole. Todd Hazelwood alongside him. Tom Heyman out of Newcastle was super impressive yesterday. Lee Stibbs. Out of South Australia, lines up with four. Your defending champ, Dylan Thomas, out of five. From Young in New South Wales, the cherry capital. Mark Crutcher from Neville in New South Wales. Near Bathurst is Graham Cheney from East Maitland. Hayden Jackson, Michael Coulter from Sydney. Anthony Tenkate from Queensland. Paul Hadley from Wollongong. Barry Kelleher, Danny Reedy, originally from the Northern Territory. Alice Springs, actually, now lives up near... All of the amusement parks in the Gold Coast. Domain Ramsey out of Geelong in Victoria. Connor Roberts out of Brisbane. Brad Gardner out of Panola. Greg Keem out of Canada. Josh Thomas. It's like the United Nations out there. Well, we've got a multi goals here, haven't we? Brad Gardner. That's the guy we're going to keep an eye on. Here we go. The man of steel. The Herzog steel, number 37. The Waltec Mustang on your pole alongside Todd Hazelwood. So good to have Todd. It's a rolling start. It's a one-off appearance for Todd Hazelwood. It was tremendous in the Trans Am Series last weekend at the island, running a top three. And we ride on board. This will be Josh Thomas with those white gloves. We're waiting to go in race number two. It was one-way traffic for Josh Haynes yesterday to lead home Hazelwood. Tom Heyman, talented young man out of the Hunter Valley. With your top three, rolling start. How fantastic is that look, eh? Oh, we're going to go four wide down into turn one. Hazelwood, that is a ripping start. Todd Hazelwood nails it. Stibbs in that arrow car sales, green and black entry. In behind Heyman. So we're working out the DePrinzio concreting entry. We just saw Coulter in that bright pink entry. 
Well, the weather was average, George Gambino, this morning, but the sun is out. What a day for racing here at Sydney Motorsport Park. Fantastic place to be. Where else would you want to be on your birthday, obviously? But uh, these guys are so impressive. I love the sport. They look great. They sound tremendous. There is 10K to that bright orange injury. We're already seeing Brad Gartner moving up the order. Your leader is Hazelwood from Haynes. Back then to Heyman, then Stibbs. Cheney up to position five. Crutcher sixth. Hayden Jackson seventh. Good start for Michael Coulter. He's up to eighth. Uh, 10K. Nice job to ninth. Brad Gardner to tenth already, George. Yeah, he's gone up six spots already. That's pretty impressive. Here he is on board. Proximity, right? For yeah, <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> I know you love your drifting. The, yeah, yeah, it's all good. The great George Gambino, the main man, the founder since 1989 of High Tech Oil is a proudly 100% Australian company. And there is the factory pilot, Brad Gardner. Look at Dylan Thomas taking on Lee Stibbs. The defending champion rocks up the inside. Should be able to hold sway here. See whether Stibbs can try and cut back in that CXC injury. Now, George, if you look on the roof of the CXC Mustang, he's got the Anzac logo on the roof of that car and a big Aussie flag on the rear quarter panels celebrating Anzac Day this Thursday. Yeah, that's great to see. It's a very patriotic thing to do. And uh, good on Dylan. He's good at that stuff. Somebody just went off the racetrack a little bit, which is kind of not unheard of in that sort of turn three and four area. Boy, Dylan Thomas has gotten away from Stibbs. The cars get a lot of attitude through that part of the racetrack. That's the drifting part of the course right there. The boys get right after it. It's cool to marry your drift series into the High Tech Golf Super Series too, George. Yeah, I think it's a good fit for both uh, these categories. They're both trying to make the drifting more and more, more professional as we go. Mix it with these guys, it's going to make everybody step up a little bit more. Those drone shots are just tremendous. We're looking at a number of different scenarios in all this. We have different classes. We have a Circo Masters class for drivers over 50 years of age. We have a Sportsman class for drivers between 30 and 50 years of age. We have a Pro class for drivers under 30. We have our Race Tech Race Seats Rookie Honours. We have the Wilwood Big Breaker Award for an outstanding performance. We have the Hypercoils Hard Charger for the most amount of positions made up in a race. And you know the hard one too, George, the Bowden Zone Best Presented. Who on earth can you pick? There's so many great looking hot rods. Oh, yeah, how good do they all look? And there we go. There goes Brad. Here he Having comes. a bit of a run on sit side. Here we go. Up the inside on Hayden Jackson in the Maitland Glass. Kamatsu well, entry. Good pass. Yeah, that's a great one. If I'm looking at the screen, he's come up a fair bit now. Well done. Yeah, position nine after starting back position 16 so he's already that hypercoil springs hard charger award is looking pretty tasty for him right now you gotta admit george he's a very unlikely hard charger it's a very yeah looks like the kid you sit next to in chemistry yeah well uh, we, we deal with a lot of country people and uh, brad's country orientated and i think we like that about him and there's a lot of rubber on that track from this morning so they must love this corner his family harvest a different style of oil to you, mate. <laughs> yeah, they were talking about... A little about, bit more therapeutic. Yeah, they were asking me there, can, can we make some out of barley? I'm going, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you could add a corn if you're in America. <laughs> Here is Thomas. So we're working on Haynes there in that second spot. Dylan Thomas up to 10th. Look at this. He's now coming after Crutcher. Now, bear in mind too, George... His tyres are a lot more fresh than anybody else as well because he went out very early in yesterday's race with a hydraulic issue with his power steering, Brad Gartner. So he didn't scrub the tyres at all after effectively just qualifying. Yeah, well, that's a bit of an advantage after a bad day, isn't it, really? It's about the only thing you can do. Wow, looking on. No, Heyman. Tom Heyman going to the pits. That is devastating for that young man out of Newcastle, the family, a Century Batteries family in Newcastle, the family business. Here comes Brad Gardner. Looking to the inside on the crutch. Hard through the box. There's the DePrinzio concreting entry, the Polaris Marine Group. Number 30. Looks like a Carl's Jr. on board there, I notice as well. And Anston's Tyrant Auto. 
I love the old school Jack yeah. system in TAT, yeah. George. I actually picked that up uh, the that first time I saw the TAT. He goes, this is really cool because, you know, that's where he started. Yeah, absolutely. Looking back at his battle now, Mark Crutcher on screen in sixth. He's now got Hayden Jackson, part of that dream racing team. Now Hayden has, working on the setup, on the tools, on the communication, legendary touring car great, Glenn Seaton, working on the spanners with Kim Jane as well, and Cam Fisher. Hello to Craig Scatella, probably watching in the dream racing principal, who had knee surgery just recently. So I'm hoping that Craig is going to be better very soon and back with us soon. Maddie Cav, what is the go with the Heyman car? Yeah, so it looks like they've just jammed that in between two gears. So they just have to come and pull the gear shifter out. Oh, man, that is absolutely devastating because he was looking at the top five for sure. Hazelwood, Todd Hazelwood, drifting, if you don't mind me using that term. They've hammered one of your signs already in turn one. Where do we set the build? Yeah, where do you set it with these guys at the moment? Look, they're all moving up on it. Oh, oh, Thomas! They get some close stuff here. So that is very nice job right now for, for Josh Thomas. So bearing in mind, Josh started back in position 18. He's now up to 10th, I think, at this point. So right in behind Coulter. He's on fresh tyres as well because they unfortunately detonated a motor yesterday. And the good part about Josh, he celebrates his birthday as well today. Oh, really? 26 yeah. years of age. Do you want to stop? <laughs> yes, please. Those were the good old days. <laughs> Here he is, right on screen, the 169. Josh Thomas, his dad, Brett, is the principal, the main man of TFH. Those temporary fencing bollards and fences. You see them everywhere around motorsport events and sporting events and community events as well. Brett was an outstanding sprint car and speed car driver back in the day. Here is Hazelwood under pressure now, and there's a shot of mum and dad. That is mum, Kylie, and that's dad, Steve, just wandering back into the shot as well. And they're very proud of this young man. He's 20 years of age out of Canberra. He's got three older sisters, and they just love their racing, fingers crossed. Yeah, I met that family uh, late last year and uh, had a good chat to them, and I, I, I praise Josh all the time. I think he's a great driver. And a good young man, George. And I think yeah. that's equally as important because your racing career can be over like that. If yeah. you're a good person, yeah. that's where it goes. And I, oh, I, just looking at the right front then of Hazelwood, that car was very heavy over on the right front. I like Todd Hazelwood too. He's got a lot of ambition and a lot of passion. Yeah, there's uh, some good names up here now. These guys will be recognised in the next few years. You can imagine all this way. It's incredible to think Todd Hazelwood is coming up on 10 years of supercar community involvement in different teams. Danny Reedy, the Desert Palm Resort number five, the former sprint car racer, just going by Barry Kelleher and Paul Hadley. Closing in. Paul Hadley told me before. Oh, man, same issue for the DiPrinzio concreting. Normally I would say harden up when it's the DiPrinzio concreting, but I won't. That is hard luck for those guys. As to the left of your screen, you can see Josh Haynes closing in once more. Boy, he's all over the back of him now. He needs a little bit more space there, the looks of it, doesn't it? But it's great racing. Long way back to Stibbs in third from Cheney. Gardner's up to fifth, mate. That's incredible, isn't it? That's the talent there. That's makes him be going. Brand new race car. Brand spanking new Camaro with high-tech oils. Here comes Josh. Having a real run at Todd Hazelwood. It's race two, round one of the TF Heights Tire. TA2 Muscle Car Series, framed by High Tech Steel Framing. They're doing around 270 to 280 k's an hour there, George. Wow, that's pretty quick, isn't it, eh? That's fast as some of the other guys that are going around there, obviously. This is where, I'm not sure. Yeah, here we go again. Geez, Gartner. Now he's coming after Graham Cheney as well. He will have big a big dive. dip here in turn two. That's a big dive. Cheney won't like this one bit. He'll try the switch back. To, uh, wow. Wow. Well, you got to remember, too, Brad has had a whole race with no wear on the rubber yeah. compared to Graham Cheney, who's probably trying to keep a couple of for later in the last two races. So yeah. Gardner from position 16 to fourth right now. It's seven laps to yeah. go. And he's coming up on his ex-teammate, 
Lee Stibbs. That'll give him a little bit of extra vinegar on the right pedal. Very corporate hill. Hazelwood continuing to hold sway. I'm just not 100% sure that Todd is overly happy with the balance of the car right now. It seems to be laying over on that right front corner, particularly in turn two. Watching that Waltec Herzog Steel entry, and Rob is here from Herzog Steel this weekend to keep an eye on this young man. He's coming, George. He's getting closer. He's getting a good slingshot out of this one. It's almost a bit like the old dog chasing the car, though. <laughs> Once you get there, what are you going to do with yeah, it? Exactly. So I don't know that Todd's going to make mistakes, but well, this is where I'm interested. Turn two. Here is where Todd is really, really good. And if we watch the car getting into not this corner here, but the next one, traditionally the last couple laps, that has been where Haynes has been able to close in. Now let's look at the TFH Mustang. Mid-corner. Better then. Different entry to the corner, but you see how and Josh... He comes up on him really quickly, doesn't he? Yeah, just that part of the racetrack yeah. there, George. Oh, damage to Jackson. Look at this. Oh. Meanwhile, Josh Thomas... What a drive from him. He's going to get by Coulter in that really sweet-looking turp entry. Yeah. Bright pink. Josh, we go on board with him. Oh, good job from Coulter to fight back on the outside. If he can stay out there, he'll have the run into the next right-hander, but he can't. Josh, what a pedal. Oh, he goes. He's come he from goes, Josh. Position 18 to 8. And you're right. Josh is on his tail now. Wow, he's all over in the back of three. Yeah, turn number nine. Do you think that's a tyre issue there? Yeah. Hard to know, isn't it? But he's all over him. Todd's going to have to go a bit defensive. Yeah. The legendary Max Dumsney is here this weekend. The Hoosier Australia tyre dealer. And his son Marcus, a former Australian sprint car champion, is helping fit the tyres today. Yesterday it was Max's eldest son, Mitchell, on the tools. You like that? You gotta keep your boys on the tools, don't you, mate? Yeah, I'm waiting for the grandchildren to do this. <laughs> <laughs> We're working lap nine now of 15. Yeah. So we still have a long way to go. Yeah. Nothing in it between these two. Point two of a second, George. Yeah, that's fast and that's close. I mean, what more can you want? Here we go, turn two again. This is where Haynes has been able to close right in. Todd Hazelwood is a very, yeah. very capable driver, though. So Josh is going to have to really work for this. And I, I said, well, oh, wow. that was a good drift. I don't think he meant it, but oh. the cool thing about Josh is he knows about the caliber of Todd Hazelwood. So he would be, as a competitive 20-year-old, he would be just like, I want to pass a supercar yeah. driver. Well, we say that in our sport, too, where we get the younger guys chasing the fast guys. And you know what? You can get faster if you're chasing those fast guys. So yeah. it'll be helping Josh... Uh, experience chasing somebody like that. I'm sure you're right, mate. He ran very well, Hazelwood, last weekend at Phillip Island. Of course, he subbed in at Erebus Racing. And the supercars did a great job with Jack LeBrock as well. So it's a point three of a second gap, but that depends where you measure it because it's, uh, it's about a layer of chrome on the bumper at some parts of the racetrack. That's all there is in it. Stibbs is back 12 seconds behind his battle. Gardner's to fourth. Cheney fifth. Crutcher sixth. Jackson seventh. And a big, big pedal from the 169 of Josh Thomas. He's come from 18th to 8th. Gartner's gone from 16th to 4th. Yeah. Massive pedals. Massive. Very hard to do, obviously. Ab absolutely. Great to have the great George Gambino, the founder of High Tech Oils and High Tech Batteries, since 1989. Incredible to think it's about... 35 years or something like that. Yeah, man. it is. I was just saying that when we were talking about that before, it's been a long time. A lot of grease and the bearings. So yeah, years, mate. so much. There is Jackson, Hayden Jackson. Got a little bit of damage, but nothing to worry about as he comes after Cheney. This is a good run right now. Cheney, has he got a problem? He's slowing. Hayden Jackson went past him very quickly then. Now, I'm not going to say that Hayden wouldn't go past Graham, but just seemed to be a little bit of sting out of the tail. Is that the exhaust hanging Oh, on? it is too. It looks like the exhaust is coming through them. Holy cow! Well, that's going to be an issue if that comes off. That is a new one. I was thinking it was just like the... Fiberglass. Yeah, the, the panel, panel on the side, but maybe it was the exhaust. Yeah, the side skirt's a little bit different, but that still might wouldn't be doing too well. Holy cow. I've never seen that happen. Those aerial shots are really cool. Great to have your company for race two of round one. 
of the TFH Hire Australia TA2 Muscle Car Series framed by high-tech steel framing. I think Todd has settled the ship just a bit now. Yeah. He's out to a, about a third of a second, which doesn't sound like a lot. But right now he's kind of edged out just a little bit as we come up on lap 11 of 15. Starting to leave some licorice strips now, which means those tyres are getting a little warm. Connor Roberts, 11th right now, doing a nice job. Danny Reedy in 12th, Kelleher in 13th, Paul Hadley 14th. Dylan Thomas issues for the CXC car. And now look oh, at Thomas. Yeah. Josh is really driving the wheels off this thing. Coulter in behind Cheney now. So Thomas is up to 9th from 18th. This will be making Dad smile. Coulter coming on. There's that shot. Holy cow. Wow. I don't think, think I've ever seen that. It's going to come off eventually. Hopefully it stays on there until the race is finished. Yeah, because he's done a good job. Now, cool shot right here. The arrow entry right there of Connor Roberts, the bright red Dodge Challenger. Sweet looking hot rod behind Anthony Tenkate, the Queensland veteran, as opposed to the 18-year-old behind him from Brisbane. And it's a good-looking hot rod, that bright red Dodge. And right now, he is in position 13. Danny Reedy is behind this lead duo in that battle. Hadley. Paul Hadley coming after Barry Kelleher, a couple of the Circo Masters class drivers. Paul. Uh, Paul Paul's been pretty good. He's actually a high-tech distributor in his area, so... He does well. And I think he actually came on board because of your relationship with this series as well. If I remember rightly, Paul is a, a very forward-thinking and a guy that wants to protect the industry. And I think he came on board as a relationship with you, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Um, we did some uh, super boats in the early days, a few rips on boats, and I, that's where I met Paul. And uh, we've been good friends for a long time now, and he's a big distributor of ours down in his area. I love it. He's a really underspoken and very unassuming man. You didn't get two words out of him, but he's yeah. a very successful man yeah. in the Illawarra engineering side of things. Here comes the battle. Hazelwood is going to be busy now. He's got the Man of Steel tugging on him at the moment. Let's hope he's got a pocket full of kryptonite because here comes the Herzog Steel, Man of Steel. Josh Haynes. Yeah, some, oh. advantage, some, some areas he's got a lot of advantage, Josh, hasn't he, over that? But he's good Good parts and bad parts of this one. Look at Mum. Yeah. Kylie is absolutely chewing down the manicured nails. 1 minute 33.73. Hazelwood has the quickest lap in that TFH entry. Also got Raw Metal Corp on board. Todd Wanless out of Queensland. We're just watching now as Hazelwood trying. Now we've got a lap car coming up. This will be interesting. See if they get a clean run. It might be Keem. I haven't seen Greg Keem much at all. No, in fact, it's Domaine Ramsey, the speedway racer and team owner. Look at that for us. That's a, a great shot. Gunfighter eyes right there for Hazelwood. They're going to come yep. up on Domaine Ramsey. You see car camera stuff is great. Oh, he switched to the outside. Domaine went to the left to get out of the way. Nice work from Domaine Ramsey. He doesn't want to be part of this and mess up the lead. Lap 12 of 15. And he's right there this time. Probably the closest he's been. Hazelwood got loose. Oh, there he goes. A bit loose there, too. Oh, Josh. Go. Watch turn two. Slow in. Trying to peel it back across the corner. Two fantastic looking race cars. A pair of Mustangs. One for TFH Hire Racing Australia and one for Wall Tech Motorsport. And George, I know you love a bit of bling. Aaron Tebb with the Waltec neons yeah. inside. It's like a Formula One pit. In there. I know. I actually got a photo of that from uh, my Taylor, and she said, "We need one of these." Absolutely, we do. <laughs> I can see a big, bright red, high-tech neon <laughs> sign. That's for sure. Yeah. This guy in front has certainly been under the blowtorch. Todd Hazelwood has got a young gun out of Canberra, chewing on the rear deck lid of that TFH Hire Mustang. A little bit of extra ground there. Seems like under brakes. That's where Josh is yeah. able to close in. Yeah, I think it's um, interesting that part of the section is always right up behind him. But then Todd pulls away. Is there any momentum to be carried here? Wow. 
Am I just looking right now at Thomas up to third place at the moment? So Dylan Thomas up to third, Stibbs to fourth, Gardner to fifth now, Crutcher to sixth, Jackson seventh, Josh Thomas eighth, Michael Coulter ninth, Graham Cheney. I just got to think it might be a gearbox issue or something with Cheney because they chewed him up in a straight line. So I wonder whether maybe... Maybe he's missing a gear or something in that. Yeah. Maybe fourth or yeah. only a gear. I mean, guess. I don't know. In this type of race, they get quite tired at this time of the race. Wouldn't they be pretty full on? Cheney is a very fit individual. He rides dirt bikes a lot as well. But just makes me wonder whether it's a gearbox issue. Stibbs now. This is interesting. These guys were teammates last year. Lee, who won the round at Winton, can wheel. He's overbraked oh. himself big time. Wow. You'd be filthy about that. The Dream Racing Australia, Arrow Car Sales entry. They're still good mates, these two. They race together for the early part of Brad Gartner's debut. He's got the Palm family, as always. Great family uh, as yeah, well. Yeah, again, uh, I got asked Brad today, I said, how old are you? He said, 20. Well, oh, my God, you've done so much in your short life already. How cool. Big dirt racing culture as well in his family. A lot of his family are big Speedway fans from down the Mount Gambier region in South Australia there is Dylan Thomas, what a lonely ride for the current A1 and we're only going to see him this round he'll be doing other things within the series but he won't be racing and he's unsure of where he's going to go and what he's going to do with the car from this point on we just saw the, the Prinzio concrete entry just then of Heyman who's two laps down after those gearbox issues but working lap 13 of 15 Hazelwood I'm just wondering has there been any sort of a banter on the radio to say to Josh, do you really need to go that much harder? So word coming through, yeah. it might be towards the last yeah. lap. Reserve a bit more tyre stuff, but Josh should be uh, sick of seeing the back end of this car for sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that Todd Hazelwood's keen on the view he's got in the mirror. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Todd will be watching and be sick of it too. It's going to be an excellent next race. They're going to line up alongside each other again. In race number three. Oh, a bit of a wriggle up then from Hazelwood. Good operator, this young man. No doubt about that. South Aussie born and bred. Very famous for the old Bunning sausage sizzle. Hey, he's prepared to <laughs> do anything yeah. to raise money and so That's passionate. Great. Super subbed in with Erebus and did a tremendous job with it. Is he going to hold on? We're going to head to Corporate Hill once more. He's got just enough of a buffer now, George. Uh, well, it seems to be like that's where they're staying. Yeah, the tyre wear must be down low. Yeah, I think they're starting to really heat up the Hoosiers. Been a long race, and we have two more to go. They get six tyres to use over the weekend. And they've certainly been hammering these ones for the last two. Yeah, it would be hard on the tyres run at this speed all day. But it'd be interesting to see what they do tonight, because the temperature's going to drop a fair bit. Yeah, you're exactly right, George. Josh Haynes will have one more go, but it's going to be Todd Hazelwood celebrating victory in race two of the TFH Higher Australia TA2 Racing Series. Framed by high-tech steel framing. Well done, Todd Hazelwood. Josh Haynes gave him plenty. Yeah. Third is Dylan Thomas, those big teeth and the angry eyes. <laughs> That's a great-looking car, too. There's that Anzac logo on the roof. Good on you, Dylan. Back in that four spot, Lee Stibbs kind of got to crack it as well. Brad Gardner, if you'll stick for fourth, that's a monumental drive from 16th to fourth. There is Crutcher leading home Hayden Jackson in sixth and seventh. That's a lot of gap, a lot of gain positions, isn't it? And that's what we like in that because the Hypercoil Springs Hard Charger Award rewards the driver with a set of hypercoil springs yeah, wow. for the most amount of positions gained. This is what worries me here, Cheney. Yeah. The sting Slump. has really gone out of the tail of the yeah. PHDK. You can hear he's off the throttle quite a bit. I'll be intrigued to find out what's going on. What is the go? Because that guy is always a bullet. Mm. So that yeah, I've seen him. That's one of Paul's cars, isn't it? Correct. Yeah, yeah his team car. This car actually, last year this team, that car or that entry almost burnt to the ground. It caught on fire here at this venue. Oh, yes, I remember that one on the top of the hill there. Yeah, yeah, pretty scary situation. He'll hold on for 10th as Todd Hazelwood unhooks the pool filter. Not need to worry so much about that cool air now. 
Nice job. You can see the weather looking a little uncertain in the distance. Great shot. In the end, it was only a win by 0.5 of a second. Dylan Thomas, third. Brad Gartner, what a pedal. Fourth, Stibbs, fifth. Crutcher, sixth. Hayden Jackson, seventh. Josh Thomas from 18th to eighth. Boy, howdy. Michael Coulter, ninth. Cheney fading to 10th. 11th is Greg Keane. Good job, Greg, out of Gunnard after changing the diff. Hello to Cindy and to little light it up Leah and the boys as well. Their sons working on their car this weekend. Connor Roberts got to 12th in the end after a flat tyre. Started him from the rear. He started from position 15 today. Anthony Tenkate is 13th. Danny Reedy, 14th on debut this weekend. Paul Hadley, 15th. Barry Kelleher and trouble for Domain Ramsey and certainly for Tom Heyman with gearbox issues. It is a ripper shot. It looks like a big it's scale. Great shot set. and like so clean racing. And there's not no bad damage in these cars, and they're so looking reliable. I love the way you said that. We still got two races to go. <laughs> now I'm worried. We have, we have a lot of parts out the back. I'm sure. <laughs> not, not Paul You're right. Paul Dana, Dana Bullock and yeah. all the team. They do a yeah. great job, and I'm sure Peter Robinson, yeah. our main man, is tuned in. See the Lightning McQueen could chow yeah. there as well. Let's take a look at your oh high tech oils highlights. Oh, please, thank you. Here we let's have a look. It was a pretty clean start. You just saw Heyman trying to get up the inside. That might have taken Josh Haynes' focus to protect that inside group, but Hazelwood did a ripper job around the outside to go to the lead. Stibbs and Thomas. There's a couple of them out there. That's Dylan battling with Lee Stibbs. They were door to door. Great conditions for racing too. Nice and cool. Here is the ongoing battle. That's what we just saw. I thought Hazelwood a little imbalanced early. And Gartner ripping through the field. Charging from back on the eighth row to eventually end up way, way up the order. The Herzog still 37, trying to chase down the TFH higher. Triple one of Todd Hazelwood. Good battle here as well. Josh Thomas, a monster drive from him. Just squeezing by the Terps Mustang. Also fettled by Nathan Hearn, who's working on that car as well, along with Greg Keem and... That was the issue for Hayden Jackson. Remarkably, that exhaust did not come off. Stibbs out himself. I reckon he was going to have a crack at your boy then. <laughs> I think so too. They got a pretty good little rivalry. It was a bit more of a buffer then. And this is the way we finished it. Todd Hazelwood wrapping up a win for Brett Thomas and the team. They got a big turnout of friends and family here this weekend as that is the way. Race number two looked as we take a look at the big scale electric set. You and I are old enough to remember what a scale electric set was. Yes, it was. I have one somewhere. Yeah, you still have it? <laughs> yeah. It'd be worth some money, that's for yeah. sure. I know that Matty Cav will be standing by here very soon to catch up with our winner, and Todd will do a great job with this. He's very, very well spoken. We'll wrap things up here in just a moment. Next class coming out for Racing George. Happy birthday. Thanks for sticking around. Thank you very much, Wade, for telling the world that. <laughs> <laughs> Your secret is safe with me, George. I'll, I'll owe you one. That's all right. Sounds good to Great me. Great to be on board. Thank you. Wonderful to have you come here, George Gambino, the main man, the founder of High Tech Oil since 1989. Cars and trucks are on track. Matty Cav will be joining us in commentary in just a few moments. Great to have your company here at Sydney Motorsport Park and looking forward to finding out what was the go in the pits with TA2. and stock cars are back out on track for race number three. This one's going to go for 12 laps so we can get through all the laps. 
Welcome back to the High Tech Oils Super Series round number one here at Sydney Motorsport Park. An exciting TA2 muscle car race. Josh Haynes and Todd Hazel look like they're going to fight this one out. Let's get back to all the action though because we've got plenty going on here. The Australian Super TTs and I'm looking at Corey Gillette who looks like he's back in fourth position. A rolling start about to get underway. He has had to work his way from the back of the pack. I can't wait to see what he can do. Brett Mitchell though in the Chevy Oz truck. He's uh, been the one to beat at the moment. Miles Jones in that Honda Civic in second position. It's Brendan Hurrigan and Corey Gillette on the second row of the group. Then Danny Burgess and Richard White, a couple more of our Stock Cars Australia. Ryan Bell and Peter Ryder on the fourth row. Then Jake Frisk and Jeff Stubbs fighting through in that uh, XTA2 muscle car. Daniel Natoli and David Bunton. Then it's Robert Marchese and John Angelella. And uh, Chiara Zabaticus is out there in 15 to 21, coming out in the uh, Mitsubishi Evo. It's, uh, it's going to be a super exciting race. I can't wait to see how this one all unfolds. Of course, our TO2 muscle cars was fantastic just to have them out on track. Dylan Thomas has been doing some double duties this weekend, helping us up here in the commentary box as well as out there racing. And uh, he's run straight back up here to join me in the commentary box. And made a bit of a sweat there going third pace, though. Yeah, yeah. I think Run, I, running your own race. I, um, I actually did more of a sweat running up here than I did in the race, to be honest. <laughs> Not as young as I used to be, but... Um, yeah, no, it was a good race. It was pretty lonely on ours. We had uh, we chucked some green tyres on the front of our, on the rear of ours for that start of that because we were really struggling with the rears yesterday, and um, it masked our problem. We've made the car better towards the end of the race. It was going away again, but um, by that stage we were sort of you know Larry lonely, so it was okay that it was going away. We're, we're, we're chipping away. We're chipping away. Yeah, he'll, those those boys out in front are very very fast, aren't they? Todd Hazelwood, Josh Haynes, you know. I feel uh, like I just about this weekend. Haven't had a chance yet to look at some lap times, but. I felt like from the mid part of the race we weren't too far from matching them. Uh, I was sort of marking them where we were coming out of the out of turn eight, and they were sort of going through ten, eleven. And um, I wasn't losing too much to them, so I think in the second half we were okay on the used tyres. So uh, we've made progress oh, with our car. Brad Gardner, though, green tyres on massive charge in the fourth position there. So, yeah, well, that's right. He yeah, he, he didn't use them yesterday, so yeah, he had, so he had a, why, why not? Four good set. Four, yeah, four. No, he's he's going to be interesting to watch. All right, here we go. Australian Super TT, one more lap to go around and get themselves. Some it up to uh, undertake this race here this afternoon. Last time round we, we split them up a little bit when it comes to our times and of course it has been Brett Mitchell leading us out in the front of the race followed by uh, Miles Jones. That's really been race one and two so far and uh, it's the horsepower there. The Oz truck last time of Mitchell really just um, got away very early didn't he? Opened up like an eight second lead as quickly as he possibly could there and then it was Miles, it was Miles Jones um, I'm just looking at the point score here. Maybe it's a separate point score. Oh, that'd be um, because that's Australian team. Super TT. And yeah. that's, we've got a few stock cars Australia yeah, right into the grid. The, so. the, the points, and I could just see Miles Jones. <laughs> it, I couldn't see Brett Mitchell at the points. Always, what happened? Did he get penalised? It was always, it's always fun to have a look at this one. We've got two categories sort of mingled in together here for one race. And it's great to bump a field, though, as we see him get around. And... Um, I'm just looking at Molesworth back out in the number 10 pole sign. Now, that had some issues. The cable source Commodore of Brent Edwards is back out as well. So that's, that yeah. is some good news because we saw yeah, so that the big off. The number 10 just pulled over. It had almost like an um, electrical failure or something. Maybe ran out of fuel. Maybe, maybe they just uh, yeah. simple as, yeah. as that. So, um, it could be. So, um, yeah, they, put, they pulled off. That was uh, Timothy Molesworth uh, in the number 10. Uh, what was he? And he's in uh, there's a Nissan Pulsar. So... Um, Bit big difference in speed between the Nissan Pulsar and the big V8 out the front there, and even the, the Honda Civic. Anyway, they'll come out of the out of the turn eight here. The safety car light car lights will go off, and they'll form two rows, heading onto the straight side by side, and uh, they will have to stay in their grid boxes. No moving out of the grid boxes. Bit of pictures there of Todd Hazelwood with uh, you know his win. Um, you know, good good job by that. That's now one each for him and uh, Hainsey. So the weekend's all all square. Start. Nil all. Oh, let's start getting interesting now as the tyres start to wear and you've got to move them around. Six tyres, that's all you've got for the week. That's all we got. brand new ones. That's right. From, so, from qualifying. So, um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's interesting how you manage your tyres as well. Like I said, we threw tyres at that race. It was a day race and it was a bit longer. So we, the next race is only eight laps so you can manage what you've got, hopefully. Hope. Anyway, here we go. Ready for the Australian Super TT and stock cars start. They'll roll down until the lights go out or turn green. Oh, Miles Jones, it's, it's all about the start here because we know Brent Mitchell, he is got the horsepower and you've got to watch out for Brendan Hurrigan alongside in the 51 Oz truck, Danny Bird just gets involved. Oh look at Corey Gillette around the outside, goes driving down in the Nissan Silvia. Gillette had a great race in that, in that yeah, last it, race too. It's, it's two races he's had to work his way back through the pack and now he's at the pointy end, he might be able to apply some of this pressure. Brent Hurrigan 
Doesn't seem to be as confident on the corners in this Oz truck, which we've seen from Brett Mitchell now. Brett Mitchell again is probably going to hey, you know what, I've got to do it again. I've got to get that eight second lead. Oh, that was unbelievable in the last race. He had six and a half seconds with a lap and a half down. So let's see if he can stretch his legs. He already is. You can see he's already got three car lengths. So, and, and Hurrigan, he's uh, looking a bit defensive there from Gillett into turn four. Uh, interestingly, Jones has had his biggest challenge here because he's back in fifth off the start here, which is as far back as he's been. So let's see what he can do having to, you know, come through a few more cars. He might not get back to second like he has in the last couple of races. I think yeah. Gillette might have something for him. <laughs> well, he might. That, that might be where our race is actually going to be when it comes to Super TTs between Gillette and, uh, obviously, we go back to Jones. So wait and find out. Yep. Cable source uh, Falcon 2 is starting to make a little bit of a move there. Brent Edwards uh, yeah, had that yeah, big off big moment. Yeah. Turn one. <laughs> I'd like to know what they dragged out of the front of that car. There was a lot of grass if, if, in they, front. They, Only the dry cleaner might know what they dragged <laughs> out of that. So turn one's a pretty fast place to go off uh, looping around in circles. So um, there's the Audi TT all over the back of the 98 again. That, that, those two were in a great battle last race as well. Um, you know, and again, that, that was another one of those battles where, you know, horsepower and agility meet paths. So, uh, which is probably something, here you go, here's what we wanted to see. Yeah, miles, but, yeah. but, but Gillette's going to have the horsepower down the straight. A little bit of a nudge there from Jones. Jones up to third, give him a nudge. He wanted to get going, but uh, hurry up. Gillette was waiting and check out, check out her, uh, who's this, Burgess? Danny Burgess. Yeah, Burgess. Just <laughs> see you later, Jones. Yeah, he's up at number seven. Gillette, though, same similar horsepower, isn't it, down the main straight? They seem to be carrying very similar speed. i tell you what, Hurricane's going oh, a lot no. better with... Kiara. Oh, no. The Evo, that's not a good sign. Maybe she should have brought the MX-5. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, look, I, I hope the best for her. She's a very young rising talent, 16-year-old. Uh, wait and see uh, what she can do within the ranks of Australian Super TT throughout the year. So yeah. Mitch Mitchell hasn't done what he did in the last race. He's only 1.6 up, which is only. But, um, you know, in the last race, he was, you know six seconds up in that first lap, so it looks like hurry has got something to go with him, and Gillette's thereabouts as well, so, uh, and Joe's not too far either, so. Well, Brennan Hurrigan is a synonymous Burgess. when it comes to, to racing, right, so I, I think that maybe Hurrigan might be chasing some setup in that Oz truck, and maybe they've found it. Yeah, yeah, correct, and uh, I mean, like, <laughs> great little battle there, did you see? Oh, oh Gillette! Oh, he's big sideways, oh, no. off. oh, Gillette's off, but there was other smoke there as well. Interestingly enough, it's actually Corey Gillette. First time I've seen him race, I was, I was having, 41. First time I've seen Gillette race, I was having a look at the car. I go, this looks like a drift car. And he goes, I had a go at drifting, and I've decided circuit racing was uh, a bit more economical. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm not surprised to see him hanging out sideways. Yeah, correct. So um, we, we, we saw the, uh, the Evo pulling off there at turn eight, but we also saw the 41 in... in, in um, in the uh, Dick, Dick Johnson livery with the shell thing. He, he looked like he had a big bit of a spin there, Hebelson. So uh, looked like that might have been a turn uh, turn six or turn two. I'm kind of Gillette, Gillette seems to have a problem going it here. It might be a tyre issue. It just seems yeah. to really loose in the rear, unless he's broken something. Yeah, he might have broken something. He seems like he turns in and doesn't turn. It sort of seems to run a bit wide. But he's not coming in. He's like coming down, heading down the straight there. Seems like he's got full noise. So Stubbs there is also starting to get moving forward as well. In eighth place, he started about 10th. Got the horsepower down the straight there. TA2 muscle car. Dodge Dodge always looks good. Always looks menacing. Yeah, it is, isn't it? So, yeah. Why does, that, why does the Dodge, we know we look TA2 cars, right? They're the same wind. But the Dodge just seems wider. I think it's that front grille. It's like, you know, it's like a, a long front grille, but it's like squarey, boxy. Yeah. It just gives it that wider look. There's there's the uh, the Falcon that uh, was... was he was probably in the top four or five yesterday, yeah, uh, he, earlier this morning. Yeah, he was he was fighting for third position. Yeah. And he just, it was just that turn one when we've seen the Hyundai Excels have done the same thing. They, they edge wide. If you're using that front car as a marker that's in front of you and that they go a little bit wide, you go a little bit wide, all of a sudden you've got a quarter of a wheel on the grass yeah. and, and then you're out there in the weeds. He's, he's still got a bit of a way to come back. I'm just trying to pick where he is in the order here. He's, he's, he's still, he still looks like he's outside the tent at the moment. So he's got a little bit of work still to do. Uh, and a lot of fast guys up in there. Actually, uh, there he is. He's in ninth. So um, couldn't see his name for a moment there. So uh, Brett Edwards is in the... Oh, a little bit of slide there by Hurrigan. And I tell you what, Jones is not that far off of off of Mitchell. I mean, Mitchell was it's, pulled again, away massively I the first one. it's high temperature because it takes about three laps and we start see Miles Jones really get in the group. For those first two laps, he struggles to stay with them. Well, I think he got caught up in traffic in the earlier race. And, and in that little battle that those guys are having at the start of the race, what that did was that allowed Mitchell to get away that, that big margin and then from there they were in their own race so um, yeah anyway it's good to see that um, 
it, you know, that, that it's, it's much closer this time. And in fact, Hurrigan's got the fastest lap of the race at the moment. And just as I say that, Jones takes it. <laughs> so, um, of course he does. It's a, you know, the competition for uh, Ryan Bell doing really good in the 370Z, but not going to match the power. The XR6 Turbo as the boost comes in and the horsepower winds up. The Cable Source Falcon. They're still not. They're, they're pretty close to the lap times they've been doing all weekend, actually. I mean, the lap records are 40.3, and Jones just did a 41.1. So they're, they're within eight tenths of a second of the uh, the lap record set earlier or oh, last night in the nice cool conditions. Wait and see, Brent Edwards. Uh, he's probably going to be a little bit more um, cautious, I think, going around those corners. But he's uh, definitely making up those positions. He's going to set himself up for a fantastic race number four. Now, Danny Bird is still holding on the back here of. Miles James, looks like they are getting into that 41 Heppelson, that might have been in the background, I do believe. Sullivan there in the triple one car, looks like the V, uh, I'm going to say VN out there, which we don't yeah, see. Yeah, getting, getting harassed by the, the Group A, little Honda Civic, they're, they're having a uh, a good little run at it as well, in the uh, number 20 there, that's Lazoo. Yeah, and, and the little car gets past the big, the horsepower in the, in the, in the wiggly bits, so, uh, you know, we'll probably see that they'll uh, make that pass back and, uh, and you know, we get back back around them and down the straight when the horsepower matters. Look, Hurricanes all over the back of Mitchell here. This could be a bit of a battle here. Oh, there's got to be a car set up here, I think, for Hurricane. Yeah, he he's definitely found something. Well, he was in the, in the 40s and the 41s earlier. His fastest lap in this race here is only a 42.5, so he's he's a little bit off. And uh, I mean, although he's saying that Hurricanes slide in the back of that car, so if he keeps driving the way he's doing, he's gonna he's gonna run out of tires. So. It'll be interesting to see if, uh, you know, maybe maybe Brett Mitchell's doing a bit of uh, tyre management because there's still, you know, a good, what, eight laps to go. So uh, there's, there's still plenty of this late race left yeah, to be. Yeah, I still think... I still think we saw Jones there that was uh, making moves on Hurrigan before. Hurrigan seemed to just struggle with corners. Now that car seems to be a lot more planted. Yes, absolutely. Maybe it's a new set of tyres. Maybe he, maybe he has. Maybe, maybe he's throwing tyres. We were talking tyres earlier. Who knows? Um, Gillet's Gillet moved back. Gillet's, yeah. Yeah, back up in the six moment. after that at that moment. And then, and then there were two moments. Although he's saying it. He kind of stubs up the inside yeah. of Gillette, as we say. I would have thought that Sylvia would have been the more nimble car than the TA2. Uh, having just got out of the oh, TA2, I, I can know. tell you, the TA2 moves around and she's pretty she's pretty heavy it feels heavy under brakes because of the tyres that we're on but um, I would have thought that the Sylvia would have been the better option under brakes well I think Gillette's still struggling with something in the car so I'm not quite sure what is actually happening with Gillette's car and I wouldn't have thought Dale Earnhardt Jr's issues. car would have been the best under brakes well he had issues earlier in the weekend so maybe he might be nursing that home just trying to get some points give that championship alive just coming down there from the uh the Albury Way. When I say Dale Earnhardt Jr., it's Richard White's car, but it's obviously the Dale Earnhardt <laughs> Jr. livery. So let's not get too confused. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is not here racing today, folks. But uh, <laughs> his livery is, and it's definitely, you know, the Bud Racing uh, big number eight NASCAR looks awesome. So a little bit wide there through uh, turn seven uh, is White. And uh, look at this. Stubbs is going up there. He's having a massive charge. Got the nose in. White runs a bit wide as a result because he didn't want to close the door. Now it's going to be a bit of a horse, horsepower drag. It's probably too short a shoot here, and uh, Stubbs will probably be wise just to jump in behind and think about trying to do it down the next straight, get a better exit, try and uh, square the corner off through uh, 11 and uh, get a good run on the straight, which he's done that. Nice turn in. Looks like he's going to hit the apex. Uh, a little bit wide, maybe. Drifts it out there. He's big VA power. And, and uh, Gillette's dropped off. He was right on this car, so yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. I think Gillette... There's something going There's something on going on there. I'm not quite sure maybe, but I, I have a feeling it's got to do with the rear of that car. There you go, there goes Stubbs. Yeah, Stubbs, yeah, it winds it up. I mean, a bit more late model engine in that one, fuel injected, all those things, uh, the, the, compared to the highly strung like 300. Dale, 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 Dale Earnhardt would probably be in his 70s about now, he's still about too, so. <laughs> oh, the motor design's probably in about the 90s, so, you know, like. Yeah, that's right. It's, um, you know, they, they probably, they de them a little bit to keep doing these races. It's not like, they're, they're not on the NASCAR budget. No, that's right. Going right on the edge. His uh, fr French and uh, rider, these guys, and Natoli, who's probably not far behind them, were all in a big battle in the earlier race too. So they're carrying on their battle and they're catching up to Bell as well. So a nice little battle brewing. Oh, there's a spin. He's oh, off. that's French. Rich. Oh, he's he nearly pulled it back. Oh, that's... Uh, that's Didn't grab the clutch by the look of it. When, when have we talk it. about drifting, we call that a backwards entry. Backwards entry, but, but, but you... But he stopped. He didn't yeah, keep going. No, no clutch to keep the thing, the, the motor turning <laughs> over. So... You'll probably see a bit of flames off the other side if we were facing the other side, and you would have. Oh no, that's oh, no, Hurricane. Hurricane's off. No. no. Danny Burgess is going to make his way through. Maybe that's. Is it like cracking a bit? No. It's going Drive. slow. Yeah, he's definitely got something going on. I, was, I, was, I thought for a moment it might have been tracking as if he might have clipped something, but. Um, or broken. Oh, is he wiggling the wheel he's there trying to feel? Things. Yeah. 
So, I mean, either which way, he's like definitely not comfortable with whatever's going on with that car. So, pulled right off out of the way, which is, you know, good courtesy to his competitors, give them all the space, not just focusing on that. So, that moves Stubbs up to five, uh, up to fourth. So, that's pretty good. He's not too far from a podium, although it is a bit of a gap. So, now that, that puts a decent gap between Brett Mitchell and uh, Jones to 3.5, uh, which is still a lot smaller than some of these earlier races. Still six, six laps to go. Um, Assembly the bonnet of Gillett, it, it is flapping around like it, this thing has to stay down. Quite sure. Although now he's, he's back on, on the, the back of him again now, yeah. so so he's back on the back of White. He had dropped off this car for a, like when when, when uh, Stubbs was in the battle. Yeah, White, they both are. There's an apex somewhere there, boys. But um, nah, the car's moving around again. That's really yeah, but White didn't the apex either. Yeah. Really that's, that's, that's a great really Dick Johnson car. racing livery there from the. The, in the 41 Shell Helix. Can't, yeah, I mean, it's pretty synonymous, the Shell Helix. It is. Not livery with the DJR boys. So, um, anyway, I, I'd like to say that it's a massive recovery here for Stubbs here in the fourth. He has got a bit of a margin. He's, he's, he's a good 12 seconds back of, of Burgess now, so it, you know, it'd be pretty hard for him to see a podium. But, um, you know, good weekend, good recovery after uh, starting from the, the, the back of the grid in the, in the previous race after a, a fuse issue, if I recall correctly. So, um, all right, so Brett Mitchell uh, is uh, got a, has only got a 1.2 second lead. That has come down quite significantly. Yeah, Jones is chipping away at it. Isn't and it? Jones has sent the fastest lap at a 41.1, but Mitchell's last lap was a little bit off. It was a good two seconds back. So yeah, we might be looking at tyres now. I'm I tell you what, this lap, this lap is uh, another like nearly two seconds up. So I think I think Jones could be on. There you go, another fast lap there from Jones, another 41. So he's made up another second. So that's the battle. Here we go. Here they are. This is uh, Mitchell coming into turn two, and Jones has got him inside. So yeah, he's definitely going to, and it's got to give you a bit more confidence to keep pushing on, doesn't it? When you can see the back of the other car, as you see the number 41, the former Gene Cook Ford Thunderbird, a Thunderbird driven by uh, Michael Epperson out there, a former Thunderdome winner back when we had the Oz cars going. So you know, it's always a bit of history when you see the uh, Stock Cars Australia as well. I mean, the Richard White Dale Junior uh, Dale. Um, junior replica is a Monte Carlo, but it's the longest serving car when it comes to Stock Cars Australia. So it's, it's got the most history out of all of them. So therefore, that engine's well, well. Yeah, yeah it's done a few. Well run in. Yeah, yeah. I think I think the running oil's been taken out of it. Well, I, as a result of that, I just saw White go. Um, Gillet just Gillet just go past White in that car. So maybe maybe uh, Tapper to start to get a bit clear. It's going. Oh, and the 98 goes off of Ryder. <laughs> oh, Ryder. So what are you doing? He was having a great battle, Ryder. Look at this. Here you go. All over him, Jones, right on the back of Mitchell here. So, with uh, four, uh, four and a bit left, and Mitchell's wide. Tyres are gone. Cooked, but he will have the straight to save him. Oh, did you see Burgess sliding it in the background too? Uh, These guys are really oh, struggling on tyres. I think Burgess slides from about turn three onwards, <laughs> like, yeah, even yeah. on the opening lap. <laughs> Burgess, I think, is out here for the fun of it. So, with four laps to go, you got to say that uh, Jones is actually probably uh, fairly in good contention here. I mean, he's going to struggle down the straight. He's going to lose a bit, but... Around the back there, Mitchell's going to be struggling with tyres, sliding it around, and uh, Jones will do a pretty good job to be all over the back of him. And before left to go, I think he might be able to do it. Seven tenths on that lap. Look at that. 39 kilometres an hour is the difference. Yeah. 244 takes. Look at the gap. He was like right on his tail, and now what? He's, he's, he's got to be like 10 car lengths. Eight car lengths. Speed down the straight, isn't it? And Burgess is right behind, right behind Jones. So Burgess is still in this. And look, here comes White back on Gillett, just as we said that Gillett's taken him. These two are like. One's about one's out of the battle. He's dropping back. Now he's back in. <laughs> now the other one's dropping back, and yeah. it's, just, it's a seesaw. This one, and and that's for fifth. You know, it's a big battle for a top five position. Well, we'll just see what Molesworth and the number ten Pulsar just in front might become a bit of a factor in this little battle we've got going on between these two cars. Hopefully, Molesworth will know that's coming and maybe pull out of that one. So we can see Ryan Bell now on the back of the uh, 41, which is uh, probably coming up to lap that car of Hebbleston. Yeah, he had to spin earlier on. Yeah. Uh, would, I think around to turn two. That's right, Ryder just behind as well. So that's another V8 powered Sylvia out there in the field. Yeah, G Gillard and uh, White having a, still having a crack about And there's the pulsar that uh, restarted from earlier in the race. Yeah. You know, to get, just going a lap down there now. So, Well, here we go. Gillard's still holding on. The car looks a little bit more stable coming out of that corner. I, I can't really understand why. Look, oh, wiggle under brakes. Oh. Yeah, got some lock coming out of the corner. So he was obviously. Is it tyres? Was it spot? I don't know. It doesn't seem to me to be. A it's like something's loose in the rear. Like he's possibly like like, like 
I don't know, like a like an a like an arm, like a something like something's loose in the in the driver's seat. Look, no, look at it backing it in there too. It's yeah. like before he's he even turns it in, he's got a lost an arm there. Look, that I don't reckon it's tracking right. Something's yeah, something's not right in the rear of that car. I wouldn't imagine. I don't think the tyres will be that badly. Worn. Well, I mean, they're not going to be good after the way he's been no. treating them. <laughs> no. they, they might not have been really that badly worn earlier, but. The way he's driving it, I don't think there's going to be too much tyre left amongst him. So and That's like you're skating around on the canvas. So. Yeah. See what he does here. I don't know if he's... Look at, look at the licorice marks. Yeah. I wonder if he's just playing. He could just be playing here. Like, because, like, that was almost an intentional I'm sliding lead. I, I, I don't... I think with the Coming amount, into nine, it definitely... The amount of spots something. that he was climbing up the last few races, I think mean, he's actually quite competitive. You know, yeah. So... I think that might just be something wrong in the rear of the car. I mean, they've got so many arms in the back they can adjust, and maybe just one of those has come loose. I tell you what, it's pretty competitive for the, the different variances in all these cars. The top four cars have all done 41s. So, you know, like, and all four of those cars are completely different cars. Well, Burgess and Mitchell are probably not completely different, but <laughs> they're but three, Yeah, so, but three, three or four are completely different, and they've all. You know, they're all in the 41s, you know, fairly similar strength, you know, times, but very different strengths and weaknesses in terms of, you know, who's good where and why. Brent Edwards just went past in that uh, number 18 cable source Falcon. That's a big um, drive back for him to be in seventh position at the moment. And uh, if you look at Gillett White's just in front of him, trying to push on in that XR6 Turbo. It's got, looks like, yeah, uh, the timing had Mitchell, has got Jones in front of Mitchell, but the screen just came up and Mitchell just must have got Jones back. So that's the second time that Jones has got Mitchell coming out of turn eight by the timing loop, but then Mitchell gets Jones back in the drive, back into the final complex, so, and then, dri and then drives away. Right, and, it's just, and, <laughs> that must be so frustrating for Jones. He gets all the hard work done, gets the pass, or right, he, he actually gets the pass done at the line because on the timing screen, he's ahead. But by the time, you know, he gets to the start-finish line, he's like, Jeez, I've got to do it all again. Yeah. And it's not a small gap. It's not like, oh, he's just getting past me and creeping past. It's quite a bit. You have a look at there, there, there he is, front there. And you can see the big licorice mark, so he had a big slide. But look at look how easy he gets past. Yeah. Like, he was massively behind, coming off a big slide, and yet still, in that little short straight, still able to drive right past him. So, Jones, that would be really frustrating from Jones, because, you know, I can tell you in... Uh, in one mate categories when everyone's got the same horsepower, you whinge about like someone having a bit more power. So here he goes. Just stick it in there. Go on, Jones. You need to do it early because this is the time. But now Mitchell's going to have the power down into six. He needed to re he What Jones needs to do is, suck it, is, is st stick it up the inside of him into five there, but then run run Mitchell really wide so Mitchell has to get out of the throttle. He's got like basically forced him out in that escape road. Then he can, then he's got a bit of this, this, this tighter stuff here through six, seven, and eight yeah. to try and get a bit of distance because look at look at him he's going to go right around the outside here well he's stuck to the road isn't he compared to what we see out of Mitchell Mitchell's going look to slide this car yeah. and that's a bit of a risk going on the outside now Mitchell's probably done the right thing there and actually got out of the accelerator to go and look I, he's trying to block I don't want to run him in yeah that's got to be so frustrating that's why I say so what Jones has to do here is be close enough in the, in, the, in the five throw it up the inside in the five and literally force him off the road make him have to lift or go grass it's like you, you, it's it's not like straightforward play, but you know you hang on, we've got uh, Jones is going oh, to pit. Jones, yeah, no, he is back right on up, hasn't he in the back? Yeah. Oh, that's so good for this car. Well, now uh, when I say what Jones has to do, he, he just has to try and see what's going on, reset, control alt lead, lap, maybe. Final lap too now, so the final lap board is coming. Maybe he'll be checking everything, see if he can get some. What's that under the car? There's a whistle or something coming out of it, like some smoke. You know one of the things he could have done. If he cared about points, and I've seen it done before by a good mate of mine, Mr. Stevie Butcher, he uh, pulled over, bat, bat, blew a motor, or about to blow a motor, pulled over on the straight on the, on the second last lap. The boys did it. He then rolled one lap down, got the finish, got the points. See? So right now, what he's done, yeah, you can't little, little trick for little trick for young players there. <laughs> you want to get your points? Yeah, you tell me you're not very strategic. Yeah. There, Tom, but I think I think you're a little bit more strategic than you. Did. Yeah, <laughs> so as soon as I saw him going down the straight and not going in the pits, I was like, oh, mate, just pull over the grass. They're not going to they're not going to safety car it on the last lap. And just roll down. You know, there's always sometimes you know they say youth and experience. Have a look at this side, Danny Purdy. Oh, he's on him. He's and you know what? Mitchell, Mitchell's struggling here. The tires are gone. 
Uh, Burgess is used to driving sideways because he doesn't know. Burgess is going to get him here because because Mitchell's been struggling. Oh, that's the cleanest that that Burgess uh, that Mitchell's been through that corner all for the second half of the race. Well, Burgess had it a lock there, didn't he? Just kept pushing those front tyres. It was absolutely no grip in that one. But if Mitchell had have gone through that corner like he had for the last six laps, oh, Burgess. Burgess would have been on him. We didn't go wide here. Is he going to try and take a run down the inside? Oh, he's yeah. sliding the car out, Burgess. Who gets the power down the oh, best? Who can get Pretty it? Pretty even. This could be close. Pretty even. He's not going to get under no. the back. Not going to get enough draft there at the moment. Bit of rubber flicking up on the front straight here at the moment. And uh, look, checker flag is out. And it's going to be Mitchell there with the win with uh, Danny Burgess. Group of aces there for place. Mitchell, isn't it? All, all races? Yes, he's so far he's three from three here when it comes to the um, stock cars and the Australian Super TT. But like, who's going to be left? It looks like, look at this. Brett Edwards has got past uh, Corey Gillett for fifth, so that gets the top five. So before it was, oh, where's the number eight gone? I know why. Stuff, stuff off. is up in the third as well. So who's dropped down? Oh, of course, we lost Miles. No, we lost uh, we lost Jones. Yeah, Miles Jones. Yes. yes. So. Oh, that's great. That's a great comeback there for Stubbs. He'll be stoked with that. Yeah. Look gets on the ball. Look at him. Jones He's gutted. Off. As you would be too. He was like literally fighting there for the lead, thinking that he's going to win that win it, and instead you can feel the frustration yeah. in, that, in that footage, can't you? I, like I can you. feel it. I can feel it from past. <laughs> from a racer, yeah. And, yeah. and in fact, you know what? I think I probably even sat on that bit of grass <laughs> in my in my day. You've had a, you've had a shared moment. Together. Oh wait, uh, yeah. When I was younger, I was, I was certainly a lot more upset when things like this happened. But as you get around for a long time, you just you just ride the peaks and the troughs. It's uh, some days maybe good, some days maybe not. <laughs> and Ryder will finish that race and uh, just seeing where he ended up back in eighth position. Marchese just getting across the line just in front of him. Let's have a look at the official results of the Australian Super TT and Stock Cars Australia. Brent Mitchell will be your number one with Danny Bird just a close second. Jeff Stubbs all the way back up to third. Then it's Richard White. Brent Edwards with a fight back in fifth. Corey Gillett with some issues in the car dropped back to the sixth position. Then it's Robert Marchese, Peter Ryder, Daniel Natoli and Jake Frisk will come through in the number three. Uh, Lewis Lazou in 11th, and it goes Miles Jones, who uh, pulled out of that race in the end. Joshua Robbins, Damian Sullivan, John Angoli Ella, and then there's Gregory Morris, Timothy Molesworth, Michael Heppleston, Ryan Bell, and Dennis Panna is in the 20th position. Now, Kiara unfortunately pulled off as well in that number 21 um, in what seems to be the Mitsubishi Evo, so unfortunate for them. Let's have a look at the high tech oils highlights here, and again. Brett Mitchell decided, you know what, I've got to get out in front and take this on. Corey Gillett, early in the race in the number uh, 27, uh, had a big fight on here. And then all of a sudden, the car started getting really, really loose in the rear end. Now, nearly a moment here where he could have gone off the entire track. Manages to get it back on, but it means that we see Danny Bird just go by as well as Miles Jones. A bit of a fight back in further in the field here. Uh, it was for these two racers who uh, stoushed it out for a few laps between Sullivan and... And, of course, the uh, the number 20 car there as well of Lazoo. Yeah, they, actually, Lazoo got quite a long way up, up to an 11, just outside the top 10. Right behind the fridge. So that's pretty good. The fridge had that moment with the uh, spin to come in out of three, too. Sure. Yeah, and then, then it was uh, it was Ryder who we had to watch, because he had a moment as well in the 98, too. He was coming up from Ryan Bell. And in the meantime, we had the, oh, the number three, Chris, just getting involved in this one, too. The car stalled out here, and we thought, oh, let's see if we can get this one started. Manages to... Uh, did that back on track. Now, Miles Jones is coming at our race leader of uh, Brett, Ed, Brett Mitchell. We thought for a, for a moment there he might get him. He was knocking almost a second a lap off of him. And we kept watching Corey Gillick just go up and down the field. The car's moving around, very uncharacteristic now. That put Gill Gillick with, with Miles' uh, demise. Gillick's now leading the uh, the Super TT standings for the weekend. Mm, well, you... Yeah, well, that's it. And we'll just have a look at this one, though, because it was miles that we thought was, you know, there was stousing for position between that and Brett Mitchell. And Brett Mitchell had to really hold off the accelerator here. It was a good move here from what he did from Jones. And then all of a sudden he pulled over. And I thought he was being defensive, but... I think he was being defensive. He was at that point. But he's still there. I'm trying to see where it went wrong. Because I think it was this corner here. All of a sudden... Still looking up the inside. He was still having a look here. For some reason, that car just backed off. Now, Danny Burgess, in the final lap of the race, really closed the gap up to Brett Mitchell. And Mitchell's tyres absolutely fried. And we can see him leaving the black with stripes all over the track here at Sydney Motorsport Park. And Danny Burgess couldn't quite get it done in the end. Maybe another lap or two up his belt. We might have seen a different result there from the high-tech oils. Highlights there, but they will be back. The Australian Super TT as part of our TV coverage here this evening. They'll be back on uh, just a little bit later. We'll wait and see how they uh, how all the action unfolds. 
You can see that looks like it's going to be Miles Jones getting a toe off the track. So we've got a little bit of a moment here while our safety cars are out on track here at City Motorsport Park. Dylan Thomas, thank you for running up here after your race and being part of uh, the commentary team here for this one. Of course, we've got the Formula RX-8 sponsored by TFH Hire Services about to come your way out on track because uh, we've had a, a great field of them, 25 cars here this weekend. A few of them went off last time with some mechanical issues, but they've been working hard to try and rectify that. They've got a team of people down there in the pits to make sure they get back out. We're down here with Justin Lewis. And now last year, you had a great season when it came to RX-8 racing, but now you've founded a new category, which is great to have you for round number one of the High Tech Oil Super Series. Blown away. Last year, I think you referred to me as the man in the van. So this year, I'm the man with the plan. And uh, the plan was to build a uh, not-for-profit, club-based RX-8 series. And we've done it. And we're uh, gridding up with 25 cars. We've built cars, we've, uh, we've got, we're leasing cars, we've bought cars, and, uh, and, and, and if I could have another five cars, we'd have a grid of 31 on our, on our inaugural race. We're super happy, mate. Look, it's not just about you and getting this club together also. You've had a lot of support in the background there, and isn't it great to see TFH Hire come on board? Oh, look, uh, Brett Thompson from TFH has uh, been a godsend. Uh, we look at the uh, High Tech All Super Series uh, and as, as more of an ecosystem of, uh, of, of how we can then sell to major sponsors, how we can help our drivers find sponsors, which we've done very successfully. Um, we've raised over 100,000 bucks for the club in as little as four months. And really, four months or four and a half months ago, we we're an idea. Today, we're a reality, thanks to uh, ASA and George from uh, the Super Series from High Tech Oils. Now the RX-8 series is a, a great way to get into racing, I suppose, at a you know, probably basic cost compared to what we see some of the other categories getting around. Yep. How does someone get involved and what are the costs involved in getting in Formula RX-8? So look, great question. Look, there's budget categories and then there's budget categories. We are looking at this in the sense of, I want to make sure that the, the end of 2024, um, the best driver wins. So we're huge on this level playing field. Uh, we're not just talking about it, we're doing it. We've gone and clobbered all the ECUs today. Everyone's got the exact same tune. We can tell if there's that's been diddled. Not the biggest checkbook is going to be our champion at the end of the year. The best driver will be our champion at the end of the year. And I hope it's me. Look, how do they get in touch with you if they want to get involved in RX8? Sure. Go to formularx8.com or we've only got a Facebook page at the moment, so you can go to our Facebook page. Uh, you can register. Mate, you'll probably hear from me in about 30 seconds flat because uh, the uh, all those emails go straight to me. But yeah, yeah, just uh, hit us up on our um, on our website. Not just a pretty face this year. He's the man with a plan. <laughs> Justin Lewis, everyone. You're too kind, too kind. Thanks very much for all your support, Australia. It's been awesome. Let's keep going. Well, he is the man with a plan this year, isn't he? Justin Lewis, as Bill Ham joins me in the commentary box. Formula RX-8. Um, Justin Lewis, a ball of excitement. We had Stacey Vickers in here also helping out in the background. And you've just got a great bunch of guys down there. Oh, it's a fantastic group of people. You know, everybody's there with the same attitude to learn and to get this club really going. Uh, we've had terrific sponsorship from uh, TFH. And it's just booming non-stop. Uh, like Justin was just saying, we can't get enough cars at the moment. Uh, everything's going terrific. Uh, everybody's learning their way. We've got about 10 new drivers uh, that are completely new to racing. Uh, some of them are out of, fresh out of go-kart racing. Some of them have done nothing at all. And they're all here this weekend, uh, the inaugural race, and just learning, learning, learning. We've got a team of mechanics there to help them learn and to get their cars going well. Yeah, I mean, they're all down there, aren't they? You've got some big names throughout your field as well. I mean, Rob Bowden's been doing a fair bit of uh, BMW racing. Terry Lewis, former production car champion. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know where to st where I even end. Uh, Ivan Vanagato. Yeah. Um, he's a sim, sim racer who's really, in, when it comes to actually being on track in a real car, he's 
probably a relative novice at it, although he's had a lot of time behind a, a steering wheel in virtual race conditions. He's doing fantastic he's doing this weekend. Fantastic. He's, he's come off, I think, fifth last time, you know. Let's have a look at how the uh, top ten are going to be from the starting grid. It's going to be uh, Liam Hall uh, kicking things off with Jeff Connell alongside on row number one. Then it's Justin Lewis who jumped back in the car against Vince, Vince Silvestro. And the second row, then it's uh, Shad Hassan and Ivan there on the third row. Brad Harris, Terry Lewis and Rob Bowden and Brock Payne. Now, Brock Payne. That is a Brock Payne. He what is a incredible rocket. talent. Absolutely he is a incredible, incredible talent. He, him and Ryan Gorton uh, yesterday were just unbelievable to watch. Such close racing, and with not even a skerrick of going in, you know, too close to each other. Um, this weekend, we haven't had any cars damaged whatsoever. Uh, everybody's driving with a really good, clear head. That's what I like to see. With uh, and, and they've been getting the cars fixed too between races as well. The ones that haven't quite made it there. I mean, Rob Bowden's had two second place finishes, so he's not doing too bad in the points. I mean, that's a, a great start for him because he's it's his first season racing RX eights as well. So it's a bit, little bit different from the BMW. Yep. Uh, probably I don't know. It's a little bit lighter now. What concerns me is windscreen wipers coming on. So how does yes. that affect them? Because have they got a tyre here? That are they going to be thinking about a wet weather tyre, or are they no. going to be running the same tyre? We use the same same tyres. Um, they are a slightly grooved slick. Um, they will be having fun in the wet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's... It doesn't look like it's coming down heavily enough. We can't no, see... Not yet. We can't see it out on the track. So it might just be a little bit of a misting. And if we've got enough heat in the track from all the races we've had, hopefully that might just vanish. But um, the right. more we see those windscreen wipers going, the more we're probably going to see a little bit of excitement in this race. I think we might have spoken to soon about the panel damage because <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what... Lights are red. Oh, they go out here. We're underway. Let's get this started here. Hall is going to start us on the front with Connell alongside. That is a young talent. Another new one to the camera. That is a new one. He's in my old car as well, which is even better. <laughs> here, Justin Lewis down the inside in the Yellow Express, the man with a plan. Uh, can he make it all the way to the front? I think he can. He knows. He's confident in the car. I think Ryan got Brad Gordon. Harris coming around the outside there too. Yeah, I mean, that's, a, that's another yeah. big name. Oh, another he's got big a, name. It's Brakes. How... Wet is the track of this one. Rob Bowden now going to go around the outside. He needs to stay with these front runners. Three he can't, he, he can't let them get caught up in this fight. No. Oh, here we go. And look at the back, the TFH higher cars. Well, Brock Payne's going to push on there. He's going to get Terry Lewis and say, come on, let's let's move on with this. And Ivan's just in front well, of him, actually, the 89. The inside there. Yeah, he's going to take a massive Not dive that. down there, but he's pretty yep. confident at the moment. That car seems to be very well settled. Hassan, he'll get by as well, I think, very shortly. He's just in front. Uh, I didn't realise he actually wrote that car off recently over yes. Bathurst. So they've, they've been working they day and night. all rebuilt completely in two yeah, weeks. So there's a lot of fresh cars out here at the moment. New builds, rebuilds, things like that. Yes. So, um, so much racing for RX-8s, I think, as well. It's not just about racing in Formula RX-8 here through the high-tech or Super Series, but you, you see those other events outside like Bathurst and that where these guys are going and racing. So it's, um, you know, it's a good investment to get involved in, but a, a great group of guys who come down to the TFH Hire Formula RX-8 Series and, of course, five rounds this year, travelling with uh, with everybody you see here with the TA2 Muscars. Everything. So you get a weekend to enjoy the racing as well as being in it. That's right, that's right. It's going to be a terrific series, this high-tech oils. It's going to be fantastic. Just waiting to see how they're going here. There's Terry Lewis in the 29. I got it. I always get it mixed up. I see the rotary motion. I get a little bit excited. Yep. We know he helps prep a few of these cars as well. And, and there's Ivan just pushing him to the outside there. That's, that's right. Oh, that's a 71 that time with Devjack. We saw that last time. Uh, had some issues down in the pits. Now, do we know what happened? We had, we had steering, uh, it was steering. power steering problem. So they've solved that. Uh, we've actually got our own team of mechanics down there helping any problems that they have with the car, which is terrific for all the new people coming in. There we go. Terry Lewis is going to fire it into turn number one, followed by Connell by the looks of it, and then obviously Devjack. Oh, I can hear some tyres protesting somewhere. Brock Payne's going to take a dive down on Hassan, though. Going to pull it up into Stop turn it. number two. I think he might get started. Look at this at the front, though. Wide. Lewis and Harris. Yes. Terrific. Harris goes, hey, mate, just because you sat out for a couple of races, <laughs> get out of my way. Don't get involved in this one. This Bowden in good. the background as well. Yep. Well, the Brad just won last weekend. Yeah, he was out in the TCR car, the wasn't TCR he? The TCR car. So, you know, there's uh, some really experienced races when it comes to other categories jumping in these and having a good time we see it in the excels as well where we see you know some big names from uh, racing all sorts of cars around the country that get back into a control category so they can hone in on their driving skills yeah and that's what we're going to see i think with this series as Look, well this we series might, we might fantastic. see some other drivers come throughout the year definitely oh there's more people coming we just don't have enough cars at the moment 
Uh, I mean, you've got everybody from Brad Harris to 16-year-old kids who have only run go-karts or even nothing. Uh, we've got one fellow up from Rockhampton. He's done, down from Rockhampton, he's done nothing at all, basically. A bit of super sprint stuff. He's out there learning and he's doing terrific. There we go, there's another Harris there in the number That's 12 car. Bill Harris, Harris, his father. Yep, so father-son combination. Father-son, yes. It's a good weekend to bring your son out when you can uh, go to the racetrack together, you know. Yes, we've got brothers out there, we've got fathers and sons. And Terry Lewis now goes, hey, you know what? Um, that's an, I think I'm on with that position. Can yep. I have number six? Here we go. It's going to be a fight down the main straight. All right. She came in close. Harris, uh, 69. I wonder what's happening here from Black. Yeah. I've had an off moment there it's in the background. We just saw a bit of this. Uh, draft down the straight. Lewis has to uh, just give up that position number one for just a moment. I'm going to see how many how many corners that's going to last. That's what Bowden in the background. Why yeah, they're fighting it out, Bowden goes, I'll take this opportunity to close the gap down now. Bit of experience coming in there on Justin, but... Yeah, exactly. He's doing well. Yeah, Harris has a lot of experience in our boat. And it's, it's Justin Lewis just maybe pushed a little bit hard early on in this race because boat looks like he's all over the back of him now. Yes. He he's an experienced racer as here. well. There you go. There he goes. Duck down the inside. Yes. But I mean, we're having plenty of overtaking here and nobody's touched each other. It's such clean racing. Yeah, it's, um, it's great to see up on our TV screens as well. And look who's in the background. It's the, uh, the TFH Hire RX-8 of Brock Payne. He is such a talent. We could see him jump into about any one of these categories here this weekend. Definitely. And definitely put himself in the top ten, no matter what category he gets into. He can drive anything Very good quick. talent. I love seeing the big smile he's facing one of the last race. Gets out, dad's there, you know, yeah. like they, they're really invested in their son yeah, when it comes right. to racing. Yeah, big family commitment both those families. Yeah, Jack just in the background as well. Yep. Uh, here's a good little theory. bunch here. Yeah, another another little battle we've got going on for sixth position now. Terry Lewis just in the front of this Hassan. Um, and then it's Ivan and Connell behind them. Jeff I've got to keep calling him Ivan. Jeff. I keep getting his name. I say it differently every time he comes out. I feel <laughs> sorry for him. He's a, he's a fantastic guy if you go talk. Yep. But he, he a lot of energy. Uh, he, he's really excited about the South, South Australia. I uh, came down earlier in the week, did some laps here at one of the, just, uh, obviously the, the lap sprint nights here at City Mosby Park. And here we go. Rob Bowden now is going to say, Harris, TCR, mate. Yep. Uh, maybe I need your seat. Let's have a go. Draft down the main straight. Bowden has a little bit of a look going into turn number one. Says, no, not quite yet, but there's a big breaking opportunity when they get around here into turn number two if they can pull them up. This will be an interesting one. You're going to have to get a move on because while you're having this battle, Brock Payne's taking full advantage of this one. That's right. I can't even see Brock there. He's that far ahead now. <laughs> And uh, we'll, have, we'll have a look there because Devil Jack's actually done the fastest lap of the race at 147.732. Right. So he he's um he's quite quick. I'm having a look at that boat and over that drafting 196 kilometers an hour down the main straight was our fastest car. Diesel Thomas now in this little pack there in the 23 of the TFH higher. Yep. Paul just in front, Harris just behind. Well, sorry, yes, yeah, so Harris actually in front. So uh, if I look at my timing screen, yep. Harris just got in front. It's Gala behind, sorry. Bill Harris. Yes. Just, we'll see as they go around this turn number four, start to head up towards our south circuit. Of course, the GP well, He's got circuit. a good run through there too. Yeah, they go up They go up that hill. You really need to make sure you get that yeah. momentum going up there. Otherwise, it can hinder you. Justin Lewis now feels like he's in a sandwich, surely. He's got yes. two cars in front of him, two cars behind him. And at the moment, it looks to me like Devajak's actually yep. got the pace. Yeah, and Brock Payne's now, now boxed into the edge there. So, But they will come up to a left-hander in a second. But he's going to get past Devajak. He's, he's made up a few yeah. positions there after that last race. Wow, he's all over the back of the man with the van who has a plan. Yep, the big plan. <laughs> we head down the main straight. Oh, is there going to be drafting? any drafting? Yeah. Who's going to get the advantage out of this one? Windscreen wipers are still on for Lewis. Yeah. I don't know if he's just forgotten to turn them off. He might, he might not be too distracted by them. It's good signs if we're not um, seeing everyone with their windscreen wipers no. on. Lick of flame coming out the back of Lewis's car. Might That's a great side from the RX-8. All the wow, under out. brakes. Lewis covers him off. Gives him just a, a little bit of racing room. But says, hey, I'm not just going to open it wide. Devajak just grabs a little bit of dirt on the inside of the curb. Pain's probably just, it, it's probably very painful for him. He's going, <laughs> hey, hey, uh, 
like if I'd known you were going to make the mistake, I could have made a move, but you got Lewis, and when do I attack? I mean, we are not even halfway through this 12-lap race at the moment. We're no. at lap 5 or 12. It gives Bowden and uh, Harris an opportunity at the front now just to uh, maybe try and extend out that lead, see if they can get a little Work further. together and try and get a little bit of a gap. Yeah, that's it. Like, you need to work together there. Brad Harris, but he's a uh, win in TCR last weekend, and yeah. now he's in the TFH Hire Formula RX8 series here for the High Tech All Super Series at Sydney Motorsport Park. And Deverjack on the inside of Lewis. Will they make it stick, though, with this right-hander coming up? Lewis oh. is going to go deep under brakes. Into eight, slides it out, gets sideways. Wow. Gets a little bit of drive. I, I think Deverjack's going to have an advantage here because Lewis slid that car around. Those tyres yep, are really like hurting on that car at the moment. It. Oh, no, he's going to get him under brakes down into there. Push wide. Yeah, Brock Payne in the background going, yeah. where do I go? Inside, outside. Oh, Who's going to make the mistake? I want to get involved in this, yes. They get on the straight. Yeah, Brock Payne's got a good slipstream there and good speed out of the corner. Wait and see if he can get right under the rear this time. Devajak. They could work together. Maybe they can both get Lewis. Devajak pulls out. Thought about it. He did. He did. 71. Lewis on the outside. Wow, the tyres, you can see how much the sidewalls start yep. to fold over. Payne now has a go on the inside. Payne, you can see that. Look at the understeer, how much that car is. Yep. He's trying to pull it up on that corner. He, he doesn't want to overshoot it and lose this. He needs to stay with Deverjack, see if they can work together to catch up to Harrison Bowden. I don't know what's happened to uh, Justin Lewis. Maybe those tyres just hurting a little bit. Yeah, Ryan Gordon would have given so. a bit of a run last night. Yes. Lewis gave him a fair bit of a run in that last race, considering he came from the back he of the pack. He came from the back of the grid. Yeah, it was, uh, it he was he a got big through race. to about eight or something, didn't he? Yeah, it was a big so, race from yep. him. And he's yeah, had, had a big jump at the start here. Might be time just to back off for a couple of laps, maybe just let the tyres cool down just yeah. a fraction. Whoa, a bit of a slide there by Brock Payne. Mm. Might not have helped his speed. Definitely yeah. would have helped on the excess speed. Rob Bowden... Is he going to be a bridesmaid this weekend? I don't know. He's had, yeah. he's had two from two where he's been second. No, getting past Brad Harris is a big call. Yeah, well, he's Devin going to Jackson, give it a go. Devin Jackson going to lay some pressure Ooh, on Harris him very shortly. Look how quickly he's there. catching him. He's still the, the fastest lap out there at the moment. I'm just having a look at the sector times. Looks like he's the fastest in sector one as well, Devin Jack. Well, no, he's just missed out over Harris, but... Um, Look at him in sector two. He is the quickest come sector two, Devajak. Now he's got a bit of free air. Bowden. He's where is it going to come? Run. Where is that opportunity going to come for Rob Bowden yeah. over Harris? Ben Harris, very experienced. I'm sure he's going to shut the door down. Any opportunity he gets. Yep. Well, we, we wait on the edge of our seat as they come down the straight here. It's three tenths of a second. It, but at these speeds, at 190 kilometers now, three tenths of a second is nothing in terms of millimeters and centimeters. And these cars are just so equal in power. Um, all the RX-8s are across. The power difference is absolutely minimal. It's nothing. They're all the same. Uh, all the ECUs have a, a, all the same amount of output. Uh, we've got a expert going around, and he's checking all of them and making sure that every car is the same. We've got our own mechanics again, looking after all that side of it as well. I'm actually the DSO, so I'm looking after all this. Oh, so you're watching this, you're watching this intensely, oh, going, yeah. don't, don't muck up, boys. Don't muck up or I'll get Otherwise, I'm going to come down you the full extent of the law that I do have. Yeah, that's okay. right. Diesel Thomas in the 23 now, and he's uh, he's just in front of Paul at the moment. A couple of young guns going. I can't believe Diesel Thomas is so young. To be yeah, out. that's right. And uh, you see, we're going to be. A well, Devajax just yes. got past Rob Bowden. That's a big move there. So Bowden. Uh, obviously, not being able to make that move on Harris means that Devajak goes, I'm not I'm not patient enough. I just yeah. want to get this done. Oh, now he's having a crack. Yeah, that turn Brad, eight. Brad sliding through there, too. <laughs> Devajak might, have, you are reckon he might have assisted him a little bit there. I don't no, think so. No, I don't think so. Think about this, though. Devajak didn't do too many laps last race, so he's got a little bit more life in those yeah. tyres this weekend. True, true. You're not going to see many people put green tyres on throughout the weekend. They might put them on the start of the weekend, but you... 
I would not expect them to be putting them on throughout the race weekend. They're going to be running in whatever they have. So there might be a little bit of life left in those just at the moment. In the afternoon during the day, probably a little bit more tyre degradation here out on the track at Sydney Motorsport Park, yeah. whereas Dev compared Jack. to the night time where we see the a bit of relief from the temperatures. Yeah, Dev Jack got a good run onto the straight and he's starting to come down under him now. Brad's going to cut him off yeah. there. Yeah, not going to make it that easy for no, you. No, he's not going to make it easy. That's wow, sure. look at the good tie spot, right man. on the side. On the edge of grip there for Brad Harris. For ben Harris. Wow, he pulls the car well. up. Devon Jack's a lot smoother through there, though. Yep. Brad Harris having to work hard. Well, it's a, it's a little bit opposite lock there at the moment. The exclusive switchboards entry. Unbelievable that his dad actually was part of the, the switchboard upgrades here at Sydney Motorsport Park when they built yes, it. Yes, so I believe. Supply. So it's a, there's a little bit of history there, a bit of connection yeah. to the Sydney Motorsport Park. Yeah, well, they're very local. Yep. Devin Jack wants to make up for lost time. He does. Keeping that pressure on as they go through turn number six. Tries to cut down the inside. I don't think he's going to get enough run. Fred Harris just knows he can use a little bit of ripple strip there. It's not yeah. going to affect him too much. Keep him covered here. Yeah, Rob Bowden, he's going, not my perfect run of second places. Get out of the way. One of you, ne one of you needs to falter. <laughs> so, get down to 10 laps he's in this down race. Got him. I think... Uh, oh, he's side-drafting him possibly here. Yeah. Keeping nice and close. Wow, he's got oh, it he's done. Oh, he's got him. Yes. Wow, what a move there. Devajack takes the lead for the first time here in the uh, TFH Hire Formula RX8 series. It's race number three. And, of course, we come around to complete lap eight. So there'll be two laps remaining in this race. Watch out for Brock Payne, though. He's all over the back of Rob Bowden. A bit of adjustment of the mirror there, I think, with Devajack. He's yeah. just having a look for a moment. Yeah. How am I going to keep Brad yeah, how, Harris behind me? How close is he? How Actually close, is he there? And he's closing. He is closing down. Stephen Devajak. Can he hold on to this for the last two laps? Brad yeah. Harris is going to really try and have a moment there and push again. Yep. The background, Brock Payne's going to battle out for third position with Rob Bowden. Come around here through turn three, up oh, to turn four. It's Harris, another opportunity on the brakes. Devajack goes, you know what? Nice clean. I'm going to show you the same favour you showed me. Exactly. <laughs> I'm going to shut that door for you. Yep. Still pushing hard. Oh, he's pushing hard through that corner, trying to get a hit. But buzz back up here to turn number six. Very good, clean racing. Oh, Harris slide there. Slide there. Yeah, those tires are starting he's to wear, aren't they? It. Yep. Oh, he's, he's really cool. struggling. Bowden might be able to get that second position he's looking for. Yeah. Yep. He, needs to move, he needs to push on. He's going to try the Deb Jack move. Brock, Brock Payne won't wait around too long, I wouldn't think, at the back. No. He's going to look for an opportunity, Brock. Harris is going to have to fight this one out. And, I mean, how much confidence with the car moving around as you go into turn number one now? How much do you really want to push it if... Maybe Rob Bowden can get the draft down the main straight. Harris may just uh, relinquish that position because he won't want to run off the track. We've already seen so many people do that as the later stages of the races go on and the tyres get worn. Stephen Devajak with the windscreen wipes on. So does so, Harris, uh, though. So we yeah. might be starting to oh, see some more rain. And he's what's missed happening? a gear. He's had to have missed a gear. I'd say he's missed a gear. It's not over until it's over. Well, no. Harris has gone yep, around we're the outside. going to come up with some slower traffic as well now. now. We've got to lap a couple of cars. Yep. So final lap. Lay it all on the line. Devin Jack just coming up for a lap he car too. Quick. Yeah, it's, it's going to really change. Uh, it moves out of the way. Oh, 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 yeah. oh, I think we might be exchanging a little bit of contact now. A little now. bit of paint. Might man. be the first one of the weekend. I might be. Go to the inside. He's got guys. To oh, he's going to put the nose in there coming he in. Oh, oh, he's put Harris he's around. around. Harris has spun. Oh. Bowden goes through. Devajack now out on the grass and Bowden in the lead. Oh. Can he bring this one home? You've got to be right there. It doesn't matter. The, the two at the front may have had an altercation, but you've got to be there at the end of the race. And there's uh, Dustin like Lewis. It. Yeah, he's got uh, 
rear end problems, I'd say, Harris. Well, I'm sure the DSA is going to have a few words about this one. There, oh, might, yeah. there might be some position changes, I think, after the race here. These are going to be some provisional results, I think, at the top of the charts here. Rob Bowden, though, looks like he got through that unscathed, wasn't part of it. So I'm, I'm going confidently saying he's leading this race at the moment in the TFA Tire Formula RXA, and he's just got three more corners to go, 9, yep. 10, and 11. Can he hold on down the main straight? Rob Bowden might get his first ever Formula RX8 win. It's three corners. Deva Jack's just behind him, but he's got a, a pending moment there, I think, after some contact to see if he'll actually hold on to the position he's in. Brock Payne just behind him in third provisionally at the Brock moment. He's got a good run, but I don't think he'll get him before the line. Rob Bowden, can he bring it home now? He's had two second place so far when it comes to racing this weekend. Can he get his first win in the Formula RX8 back on the top of the podium? There he is. Rob Bowden will be super excited about this and accepts the chequered flag there. What a race. He's won by three tenths of a second over Stephen Devjack, but we'll have to wait and see if he holds on to that position. Brock Payne tentatively in third position. Justin Lewis ends up in fourth. And Brad Harris, well, he drops back to fifth position after getting a spun out there. Terry Lewis in sixth. And then it's Ivan Vertagliato in seventh position. Connell in eighth. Uh, Hassan in ninth. And uh, Silvestro will be uh, your 10th position runner there so, as they come across the line. So Silvestro will bring that home. And great run from Diesel Thomas there. He ends up in 11th position because he might have had to do a little bit of work there at uh, Diesel. Yep. Having a look, he was a little bit further back after, after he had a moment as well and had a DNF in the last race. So he's come from uh, towards the rear of the field down there. I thought he had a clutch back. problem in the last race, so there he's come go. back good. Results here for the Formula RXA, sponsored by TFH Tire Services. Rob Bowden will take his first ever win. Steve Devjack in second position, Brock Payne in third, and it's Justin Lewis, Brad Harris, Terry Lewis, Ivan Vantiato, uh, Jeff Connell, Chad Hassan, and Ben Silvestro to round out your top ten. Rob Bowden, first time on the top of the podium when it comes to the Formula RXA. Here's the Thomas in 11th, and he goes back to Liam Hall, Stacey Vickers, Bill Harris, Leslie Reeves, Jacob Ma, Arn, uh Filippi, and uh, Jason Gower, Mark and Newton, and Tim Rogers will round out your top 20 there. So another fantastic race. Bill, great to have you here in the commentary box. And uh, always exciting racing. It's going to be a moment in this high-tech highlights that you're probably going to watch because you're going to have to go down and uh, have a talk to the boys about I've this one. i got a few people there to talk to. <laughs> <That's laughs> There's conversation about which is always great when it comes to racing. Very early on, it was Justin Lewis who really had to uh, slingshot his way out of Eighth position there for Justin Lewis. Most to make his way to the front of the pack before. Uh, as the race went on, I think the tyres went away and we started to see Rob Bowden is super consistent. And Brad Harris took the lead for probably 90% of the race at that point because he just managed yes. to work his way through. But as the race progressed, we saw him struggling with rear end grip in that car and he was really trying to steer around. Stephen Jevett, he just, um, the car came to him really and he just saw the pace increase and increase. And for a moment there, he was leading the race and we think that down the main straighter one of the laps he may have missed a gear after this point because at yeah, this, I'm pretty at sure this that's point I thought there. he was going to run away with the with the lead there and Rob Bowden's going to have to watch out for Brock Payne and really apply the pressure and all of a sudden we go down the straight they miss a gear and it's Brad Harris taking that lead back a little bit later on now there's a little bit of contact bit here of contact when he went, tried to get through he got up on the inside Stephen and probably nowhere to go there because these boys were closing it down he closed it down once again there and contact was made Brad Harris gets spun around and Stephen Dejak rejoins the race. So we'll wait to see. That is a provisional uh, standing for where we saw him at the end of the race. Now, at this point, Rob Bowden, well, he's managed to miss all of that, makes his way home, accepts the chequered flag. We'll wait to see where the 7 1 of Stephen Dejak ends up in this race after the uh, race officials, you know, go over some of this footage and have a little bit of a, a moment to think about how that's going to unfold. We're going to have the Legend Cars Australia coming your way next here for the High Tech Oil Super Series. Well, last season we saw a taste of what the Legend Cars Australia can actually do out on track, and it's back for 2024. And joining us back in the crew is Lachlan Ward. You didn't race last season, but you're back. You just did the final race last year. What a great way to rejoin the series. Yeah, so last year I worked with Morgan Motorsport. I was just their coach and engineer for the year, basically, for the team. Um, and then, yeah, I think I caught the bug again. I was like, I've got to hop back in, so... Got the new beast behind me and we just went out for our, my first session then, so. You do some driver training in the background, you've driven some other cars. What is it about Legend Cars that makes you want to get back in the driver's seat? So basically, in, in my eyes as a coach, firstly, like, there's no car that teaches you better to drive than a Legend car. Like, they understeer, they oversteer, they've got lots of power, they're lightweight. Like, 
if you want to learn to drive, you jump in a legend car and just the cost, like the, the value for money you get in a legend car. Obviously, with the high tech oil super series, you've got awesome TV time. You just can't beat it. So if someone wants to get involved in legend cars, where do they need to go to find out more information? Yeah, so we've got a Facebook page. Jump on the Facebook page. Um, you'll probably talk to my dad. Um, also a website. Go have a look at the website. All the rules. Everything's there. Um, also shoot me a message. Lock them I'm happy to have a chat about legend cars any day. These are some of the busiest cars you're going to see on track. There's always three or four battles going on. They're always four wide coming into turn two here at Sydney Motorsport Park. Welcome. Good luck this weekend. Can't wait to see them on track. And we'll get on board with Lachlan Ward as well, who we just caught up with a little bit earlier in the weekend. I mean, uh, he's been a former champion of this one. Of course, so we've got his dad sitting beside me here uh, in the commentary box. Tony Ward, great to have you back. Um, joining us once again, there's been some exciting racing throughout this. Your son's been a Formula V champion as well. Um, uh, Formula, Formula Ford, Ford, sorry, 2019. Um, he loves this racing, though. I mean, how good was it in the last race where we saw him, you know, jousting for positions between these two in front, Ryan Pringham and Billy Filligan, who had to work together to try and get past him. Yeah, look, he really, um, you know, he loves racing, obviously. These, these, <laughs> these drivers, they get the, the racing bug and uh, it generally sticks with them for life. So uh, coming back into the legend cars, obviously he's won that uh, championship before and then we've gone over into several, several other categories. And um, as they grow older, they realise this is all about having fun. So, which is why Lockie's come back in and, and having a run with the boys. And they're competitive, you know. Lockie's done a lot of racing and he's finding it tough out there because these guys are great drivers, you know. Well, not only that, you've got some new names out in the field, people who have never raced legend cars, people who have never raced before, and Lockie's actually working with them with some driver training as well. Yeah, helping the young kids come in, you know. As you come out of go-karts and into motorsport, it's a big step and it's great to have somebody there that's done it um, and look, as a father, sometimes the kids don't want to listen to you, but you know, when you've got another uh, driver that you respect telling you, you know, it's easier to, to I suppose, listen and, and learn. No one ever listens to their dad. We no. know. Billy Finnegan will start us on the front row with Ryan Pring alongside. That's going to be a fantastic stash. Lachlan Ward might be able to get that advantage down the draft. What everyone's done to him here coming up the second row with Robert Hogan. Then there's Nathan Prido and Brendan Hurrigan in the third row. Ben Goodridge, Scotty Melville out of the fourth row. Shane Tate and Lincoln Pope on the fifth row of the grid there. Now, Shane Tate had to work his way back after some issues with the car in race number two. We're going on to race number four already. I can't believe we're in the fourth race already of the Legend Cars Australia this weekend. Look the excitement's up. growing. Look at them. A little bit of rain too. That's going to make it interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. We'll get the hand out and just wipe the water off the window there, <laughs> I think. You know, they're pretty small cars. Look at them, the four in front. They're going nudge bar and nudge bar as they go into the first corner. And Hogan goes, you know what, Brink? You know what's going on. He goes, Billy, let's make this happen. Oh, Ward there as well goes, you know, we've got to do the same thing, Billy. Let's make this happen. Pring on the whoa, outside. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, Brito just grabbed himself a little bit of grass on the inside, and he is very loose. A few cars are going to go by him, so this will reset the field just a little bit. But Pring on the outside of Billy goes, hey, 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 we worked together last time. Now it's time to battle this out and see who's going to be the winner. He got me right at the end last time. Yeah, look, great, great drive by Billy in the last race. Very smart driving, you know, working together is, is the key to this. It's not about just overtaking. So yeah, it's going to be interesting to see uh, how this unfolds. There's a little bit of moisture on the track, a little bit of a lock up there from Hardy Martin. Yeah, with this moisture on the track, they're going to have to just take it easy for the first couple of laps. And Preto, I think now, will have to work his way back. He's dropped back into 12th position behind Martin there. He, he probably had a little bit more pace than that, so he'll have to start working. Shane Tate, he's already moving up 7th position at the moment in the, the blue 147 budget rentals entry. And look, I would be surprised if Shane takes out the race. It, it, any of these... You know, the, the, the top 12, 13 that's on that list there, any of them could win this race and I wouldn't be surprised. No, they're, uh, they're always busy behind the wheel and like we say, oh, there's the, uh, the reigning champion there with the number one on the side. He's going to go around the outside, Brendan Hurrigan. He's alongside Tate. They're going to have a good stash here. Tate already up into fifth and Hurrigan, well, they're going to battle for that fifth position at the moment, but they, they could possibly work together because they've got a lot of speed at the moment. Oh, you've got the Australian former Australian champion, um, the title winner last year, Shane Tate, and then the championship winner, Brendan Hurrigan, two fast drivers. And as I say, if they're smart and they work together, yeah, there, there's no reason why they can't. It'd only take one lap. So good to see the number 17 of Bond, too, back out there. So we thought he, he lost the cylinder. Was it too much wrong with that car? Yeah, look, it was just a, a, a voltage problem, is what well, they're hoping it was. So he seems to have fixed it. Hopefully 
if he can keep going this race and we'll see if we've found that gremlin. Well, Lucky Ward's going to try and thread the needle between Billy Filligan and Ryan Brink, but no, on the inside comes Hogan as well and says we're going to make this a four-way battle. No, oh, six-way battle. Why don't we throw six cars at it into turn number two and see who comes out the other side. Tate has managed to get past him as well, so you can't go wide at all, otherwise you lose two positions. Tate up into second position already past Brink. Lachlan Ward on the outside now as we head down to turn three and four. Wow. Always entertaining, and as you said, I wouldn't be surprised if Shamery was in seventh position in the same position at the last oh. lap. One lap, seventh to second. How many different leaders are we going to get throughout this race? Hogan now leads us out. Pring goes, hey, don't get away from me, Shane Tate. Let's uh, work on this. Billy Finnegan now all the way back into, well, I'm going to say just in sixth position. Like It depends where the nudge bar is as they go around each corner. I mean, where the timing markers are coming onto the main straight, it could be any one of those three in the background in third position, uh, in fourth position, so uh, Lockie Ward will just lead that little pack at the moment, might be a, a chance just to have a little bit of breath as Hogan locks up a front wheel and will go very, very wide, surely he'll lose a couple of positions here with Tate and Pring waiting for their opportunity to pounce, and there we go, Tate goes by, Pring will have the inside run here, I think he's just going to have to uh, pull him behind, he might not have got the run just enough to get off that corner. Yes, he has. And Shane Tate, the 147, working his way back through the field over the last couple of races. And here we go. He is going to fly away here. Nathan Prido trying to get himself back in the mix too there in ninth position. Yeah, a bit of special men mention to Lincoln Pope there too in 10th. It's his first race meeting, the young fella. And uh, to start off in 10th there and uh, and hold his hold himself with everybody. He's done a fantastic job. Oh, oh, oh no. Go. Like he's going to work there with Pring, I think, to go around the outside for a moment there. I thought Hayden was going to pull out upset the apple cart, but instead they both get past Tate. Pring's in the lead. Hogan, now it's all under brakes. Tate now gets locked off. We're only going to get only going to go three wide, and Billy Finnegan from nowhere comes around the outside back into third position. Brendan Hurrigan's in the mix there in fourth. Tate's now back to fifth. Frodo's on his way back. <laughs> three corners with four <laughs> position changes. I don't, I don't know where to go, we, and we're only in lap three of eight. I'm going to run out of voice. <laughs> yeah, look, it is... Uh, not surprising that uh, this was going to happen. I said at the start of the weekend, you know, anybody could win this weekend, and this is just evidence of it. Oh, in one race. Tate got a bit sideways there. <laughs> is, it, is there a time he's not sideways? Yeah, well, look, yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of them have. More often to... than not. Oh, Lockie Ward has a look down the inside. He's going to be hard on the brakes. Billy's going to follow him. Pring on the outside. Pring's looking for a win, though, isn't he? He's been so close. Oh, you know, poor Ryan. He's, he's yeah, come around that last corner on the last lap thinking he had it. And then, yeah, this slipstream. He's been a bridesmaid a couple of times this yeah, weekend. He has. <laughs> oh, he wasn't oh, okay, no, though. Oh, Scotty Melville's had a spin. Yeah, I'm just... Does it look like there's any damage on the left-hand side of that car? Can't quite tell from that vision. He's trying to get the car moving again. So hopefully they can get that started. Last thing we want to do is chew up laps under a safety car. We want to try and get all eight laps done here because... It, then we're going to have about 14 different people leading the race. Oh, he's got a gun. Yep, that's good. He's got a gun. No, it looks like he might have just had a spin. Yep. As I say, it's a bit of moisture out there, so, um, you know, that only takes a slight bit of rain. We're uh, on the tyre that we're running, and, um, yeah, you'll, you'll turn into a surfboard pretty quick. And great to have them running here at Sydney Motorsport Park tonight. We know the, the Dirt Cousins are over there at Speedway tonight as well, so there's so many Legend Cars Australia actually racing tonight. Yeah, yeah, look, we've got a whole lot of cars in the complex tonight. So I think the um, Speedway might kick off about 6 o'clock tonight. So we've had a few people come today and watch us during the day and then they're heading off to Speedway tonight So because they know they can catch this uh, broadcast on SBS, the next race. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. they're uh, going to get the best of both worlds. That's right, SBS, Fox 506. Yeah, we've got to, we've got to go out everywhere so people can tune in to all the action of the Legend Cars Australia here at the ITEC All Super Series. Shane Tate does a little bit of an excursion out there and uh, gets out in the dirt, gets back on the asphalt very, very quickly and I don't think he lost too much time as Hurrigan slides the car around behind Pring. You don't want to get too excited at this point because we're not even halfway. We're only on the fourth lap of eight. So it's not till they come around and finish this lap that we're actually at the halfway point. Billy Finnegan's going to stay right up the front there. Ward now back in the lead. We've got uh, Ben Goodrich up there to sixth as well. Ben's um, he's only his, uh, really his second year of uh, Legend Cars. He's just bought himself a car and driving fantastic. Just trying to see where Hogan ended up in the 46. Cause he's dropped way back oh. in the field now. We didn't didn't see that. What happened or, with that? Yeah, but he's down in 16th position. So something's definitely happened to Hogan at the moment. Oh, Preto spins out. There was no one there. There was no contact there. Just got a little bit loose on the exit there. 
luckily everyone's gone wide and the 8-4 eight, eight uh, media car will uh, rejoin the race there. That's going to push him quite a way back. Yeah, it's going to make the challenge. Maybe yeah. there is a little bit of moisture because we don't have windscreen wipers, which we normally see, don't we, to, just to give us an indication. Here it is again up on our High Tech Oils replay. Stays in it. He's a former burnout champion, so no surprise there. Oh, I believe buried, he's... buried in the right foot. Yeah, he's got a drag car as well. I think he might have got confused with which race yeah, car he was driving. No, it must, be not, must be nice, isn't it, to have a few toys in the shed. Oh, good on him. Works hard. Billy's got back past. So, yeah, it was Billy's turn to lead a lap. I think we've had... Uh, <laughs> we've had well, he hasn't done it. He hasn't done it for at least, I don't know, within four laps we've got to have it. You can only lead for a quarter of a lap at a time. That's right? the way is that, how, is that how it's written in the regulations? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everyone's got to have a go. Oh, it's it's pencilled in so we can erase it later, just in case. Oh, yeah, here we go. Sh Shane Tate's back in the mix too. We saw that very loose before. And Hooligans now seems to try and cement that third position just, just for half a lap, maybe. Ryan Pring just lurking in the background. Have a look at... Uh, uh, Goodrich as well is joining this fight. Now, we haven't seen Goodrich up in the, the top one or two for a little while throughout the racing here this weekend, actually. But um, now he's just lurking in the background because... Look, it's all about just staying there in that group, you know. Look, look, the last um, three races we've had, I, I don't think... The leader out of the last corner hasn't won a race. I reckon so, you could throw a towel over the top three, but a, a beach towel maybe over the top six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, look, Shane's at the, the lead of that second pack, so he'll get back there. And, you know, they've got to work together. As I say, smart driving, which it looks like the front two, uh, front three are doing now. Trying to get that gap and yeah, keep that gap. break away. Yeah. Yeah, they've, they've got plenty of time to have a little bit of a bout there for the first position, don't they? I don't, I, do you actually want to be in the lead coming out of the final corner when they're this close? Well, based on the last few races, <laughs> no, not at all. I'd, I'd, be, I'd be relinquishing. I'd be making a mistake, maybe going second or third. Oh, look, if they, if they do that last corner perfect, they've got a chance. But, you know, there's Lockie using that slipstream again. Yeah, down the main straight. You know, these are tiny little cars. Comes, here comes yeah, the, double, the double toe for Brendan Hurrigan. So here we go, Brendan's turn to lead. 90 kilometres an hour for Brendan Hurrigan. That is flying down the main straight here at Sydney Motorsport Park in these little, you know, they're not a massive engine, 860 cc. That's nothing. Yeah, I think we got to, what, 206 last race. It's a bit wet on the track now, so they've probably been a bit more cautious. But uh, look there, you can see, again, 17 kilometres difference between Lachlan and Brendan there with a tow. So, you know, the, the, it's about smart driving. And here we go, Shane Tate back in the mix here. Billy Filligan just drops back a few positions there, Ryan Pring. Just in the background as well with Goodridge. Look at Pope in seventh position from a rookie. Oh, fantastic effort from Lincoln. That's a rookie effort to be in seventh position. Even Aiden, Phenomenal. Aiden Williams, it's his first race as well. He's up to 11th. Um, Asker Sendor had an uh, unfortunate uh, uh, axle go on him in the last race, so he's had to start off the back. He's made his way up four positions as well. They're doing a fantastic job, the kids. Wait to see if Nathan Prede can work his way back because he's gone all the way back to 19th, but he, he might be able to make that up. I don't know if he's pulled in the pits or not. We'll wait to find out. These six, though, it's a, it's a beach towel at the moment that you can throw over him. And uh, look, Pope in the background, um, he's he's not out of this race at all. I mean, with uh, still two and a half laps left to go, Pope's a definite chance of catching up with his pack. Anything yeah. could happen. Yeah, it only takes one little mistake, as we've seen, and uh, you can come over. Hey. Oh, there we go. As I'm talking, I think I've put the Jonah on uh, Brendan there. He said, you know what? I'm going to slide this around the corner and see how cool I look on the TV coverage. No, not the, too early in the too early in the coverage to do that. He's behind. He's got double. There's the oh, double there's toe for, for, for Tate. Lockie Ward's got him in the left mirror, the rear vision mirror, and the, the right mirror. Total. They're everywhere. Well, he's going to have to cover off on this one. Tate might get enough to go around the outside, though. He's got the no, craft he'll, there. He'll let him go in, and if he gets him, he gets him. Wow. Here the tyres protest. They've done a few laps now. They've got a fair bit of temperature in them. Yeah, if you're in the wrong spot there, you're going to lose a couple of positions. It's, it's that easy. Tate, as, as, back in the lead. I mean, th to think he went back to sixth, now he's back in the lead, and we've only got a, about a lap and a half between that. And all of that, uh, all of that uh, wrestling they're doing, that's given uh, Lincoln Pope a chance to catch that front group. Yeah, he's getting closer and closer. But look at their timing screens. I mean, he's he's really only a couple of seconds behind this pack. Which, uh, three seconds, uh, looks good. He's, uh, which, <laughs> as we've seen, doesn't take much to gain that. 
Oh, well, Tate will lead us in to turn number six. He's got a minute little gap, and we're talking probably a couple of tenths of a second there. It's uh, blowing out to four tenths last time they went over the timing markers. And here we go down. Lockie Ward has a little bit of a look on Billy Finnegan, who's in second position. Yeah, no, you know, let's keep our eye on, on uh, the, we might see the Finnegan shuffle again here uh, on the last lap. He sits himself in the right position, gets that toe. Yeah, Ward says, hey, I'm just going to stick this for a second here. Maybe Finnegan and I can just get on the uh, rear crash bar there of Tate. Maybe we can make this a three-way battle once again. But watch out, you've got Hurrigan behind him, good Richard free. Now it's starting to become a towel. Oh, Tate's done it again. He's gone off the... He's gone... He's just gone a little lawn mowing. Maybe that was intentional to get back into the right position to win the race, eh? Possibly. It is the final lap, though. Yeah. The that. final lap, you've got to make sure you're poised on that final corner when they're all this close. Oh, well, well, Billy's gone a bit wide. <laughs> you're going to need to open up a gap, Lockie, because they're all on the back here. They're looking for that draft. Hurricane puts his nose in, and oh, Billy Finnegan will try and shut that down. Ryan Pring delegated back to sixth position at the moment. Where's Pope? Oh, he might be a little bit too far back, I think, on the final lap here. Yeah, yeah, look, he's, he's, uh, he's held his ground, but um, this is going to be interesting. I mean, let's face it, every race is finished like this, where the leaders come around that final corner and got oh, taken. I'm just having a look, Credo's over here on turn number five, I think, in the background there. So he's got out of the car, something, I don't know if he's spun out or that something's gone wrong with the car. That's why we've seen him drop back so far, but he's watching on. Yeah, he's had the intelligence to get out of the way so the race can keep going. Just holding on to the back of this six car pack. One, two, three, four, five, six. They're all bumper to bumper here as we go through turn number eight. There is only four more corners to go. I should say oh. eight here is taken to slide on Billy Finnegan. Really doesn't have anywhere to go, so that might slow him up a little bit. Lockie Ward now opens up a tiny gap. It's out to six tenths of a second. Will this be enough? Final three corners. It's the drive down the main straight. If he can just hold a gap. Big enough. Maybe he can take this all the way, Lockie Ward. Final corner, Tate. He's been sliding the car around. Billy Filligan on the background. He is the the king oh. of using the draft here to do some overtake. It's not all over yet. We've still got 100 metres left to go. Ward trying to get him out of the draft. Can he make it happen? The line's coming. He can see it. He's clawing at it. Tate trying to make a move. But Ward will get there and take the check and flag over Tate. And it's down to four hundredths of a second there over the finish line. An incredible finish. Finnegan not too far behind again. That's 15, 10, uh, 15 hundredths of a second as well behind them. And uh, just a little bit back to Hurricane Goodrich and Pring. Uh, you could throw a beach towel over that top six in the final moments here of the Legend Cars Australia race number four. So that's about one and a half seconds gap between the top six to finish the race. Yeah, and there we go. Some more cars just starting to come over the finish line too and they'll record their results. Uh, fantastic run there. Scotty Morgan a little bit further back than he probably would have liked to hope, but uh, a few of them spinning out getting back into the race. Let's have a look at how the official results are here for Legend Cars Australia. Lockie Ward with the win over Shane Tate by that four hundredths of a second. Billy Billigan not too far behind either. Brendan Hurrigan in fourth and it's Benny Goodridge. Ryan Pring will round out that, that six pack that were really fighting it out throughout the race. Lincoln Pope them in seventh through Duck Scott Morgan and Robert Hogan will round out the top 10. So he dropped back a few spots. I'm not quite sure what happened to Rob Hogan, but he was right back down in uh, a lot further down than that. Mark Duckworth in 11th, and it's Aidan Williams, Chris Spicer, Darren Bradley, Stuart Bond, Asker Sendall, Matty Bond back in the fight, the number 17, Hardy Martin in 18th, and Nathan Credo unfortunately bowed out that race, and Scotty Melville as well in the 81. So some issues there. Hopefully they can get them back out for race number five. They'll come to you later this evening for the Legend Cars Australia. Fantastic racing. Tony Ward, one, thanks once again for having you in the commentary box. We'll have a look at some of the high-tech goals, highlights. There's plenty of them. We could pretty much go for another race just That's to the highlights, <laughs> couldn't we? Good. Incredible start here. They all went nudge bar to nudge bar here into the first corner, and Lockie Ward trying to help him. Nathan Prito just grabbed that grass, and it really sucks you up on the inside, doesn't it? And that pushed him a few positions back, and I think maybe he was pushing a little bit harder in the race. Might have uh, used up a fair bit of tyre in that. Shane Tate managed to jump a few positions in the first couple of corners there to get himself in the field, but this is what it was. 
you know, straight after straight, we were seeing two and three cars wide. They were nudge butter, nudge butter, try and use that draft. Tate, well, he just kept wanting to go gardening. Here is lawn mowing a bit in this one. I think, uh, oh, there's Prado again. Yeah. Going off his, uh, his drift, uh, drifting skills there. Yeah, he was. And here we go. It was uh, Hurrigan who led for uh, just a little bit, the uh, Australian champion there from last season. And he led for probably what we said, that you're only allowed to have a maximum half a lap lead. That's he, right. He was probably there for that. And then we saw Shane Tate take the lead back two later in this, but uh, Billy Billigan was right behind him, and Tate said, uh, look, I like the grass. I'm going to go back there. We spoke about the speedway, and he thought possibly he could try and mix them up between the two. Give it a crack, yeah. <laughs> so he, he relinquished that position once again, and then uh, Lockie Ward, this is where they got a little bit of about in the final lap, gave Lockie Ward six tenths of a second lead there for a moment there, which was probably enough, I think, to secure Well, only race. just. I mean, six tenths. Have a look at the, six at the end. And that slipstream. He only just got it. Yeah, that was really, really close. Four one hundredths of a second over the finish line. The thumbs are up, you know. They know they've had a great race. Oh, Everyone in that top six had a moment where they led the race. They've all had their moment. Um, Hogan even. So there's probably seven different race leaders throughout this as well because Hogan ended up a bit further back down the field. But this is another where we went off the start there where we saw Nathan Prito grab the grass. But, you know, three wide here. There's a moment there where uh, Billy Finnegan just shut the door down on that one as well. And Ryan Pring went around the outside. But fantastic to be here at Sydney Motorsport Park. The lights have been turned on. The sun is setting in the background. And we're up to some fantastic racing coming your way from 6 p.m. Join us on SBS Viceland, Fox 506 and KO Sports. We'll be back in half an hour. Don't miss any of the action from the High Tech Oil Super Series.